Hello and welcome inside of Thermopolis High School, home of the Hot Springs County Bobcats. I'm Jordan McCamey and this is Warrior Athletics on the McCamey Broadcasting Network. The Warriors wrap up the 3A Northwest Conference season tonight on the road with a number three seed for both squads on the line for the upcoming 3A West Regional right here at Hot Springs County High School. This is the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show presented by McGarvin and Taylor Real Estate in Worland, 307-347-4271 or visit them online at worlandwyo.com. This and every broadcast would not be possible without the wonderful support of this community and the following businesses. McGarvin and Taylor Real Estate, Hasco Industrial Supply, Admiral Beverage, King's Carpet One, Sally's Classic Pizza, Swing Trucking, McGarvin and Moberly Construction, Diesel Pickup Specialist, Bighorn Federal Savings Bank, Bryant Honey, Jay's Detail, Sage Creek Land and Cattle, and Stellar Roofing and Construction. If you're looking for an exciting advertising opportunity, look no further than McCamey Broadcasting. We're running a February special for any business who signs up and pays in full through the end of the Warrior Sports Calendar, $100 of free advertising. Contact me, Jordan McCamey, at McCameybroadcasting at gmail.com. That's McCameybroadcasting at gmail.com or by call or text at 307 431 1468. 307 431 1468. Varsity basketball action is just around the corner on the McCamey Broadcasting Network. Can the Warrior squads take out the Cats and secure a rivalry victory? Or will the Bobcats upend the Warriors and seal their four seed fate? Find out next on the McCamey Broadcasting Network. The Warrior Supporter Shield. Join the war party. Hasco Industrial Supply is known for their industrial hoses, steel products, and trailers, but they'll surprise you with products for every customer. Check out Lazy One Clothing, matching pajamas, and more. Kill Tech Jackets for kids and adults, ready to protect you from old man winter. Stay cozy and stylish with Trail Crest Blankets. Stuck? Not a chance with Yankum Kinetic Ropes for every size ride. Give Hasco Industrial Supply a call at 347-6158 or stop in at 415 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. Swing Trucking is a family-owned and operated company in Worland, Wyoming, offering trucking services for a host of industries. They have done extensive work in Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, and Colorado, as well as surrounding Rocky Mountain states for the past 70 years. Their modern and up-to-date equipment allows them to provide full-service solutions for their customers' needs, from start to completion. Swing Trucking, 347-4161. Swing Trucking is a proud supporter of McKamey Broadcasting and Worland High School Athletics. Here in Wyoming, we live by the spirit of the Wild West. Now where the sun's a little brighter, where the snows that fall are a trifle wider, where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter, that's where the West begins. Pop out from uh, time to time, so uh, we will keep an eye on that throughout this one. So we do apologize for some of the uh, streaming interruption. Hopefully that'll... Uh, work itself out throughout uh, this contest here tonight, but we will keep our eyes on it here at Thermopolis High School. Lady Warriors, Lady Cats looking to battle here in the 3A Northwest on a Thursday evening. The Lady Warriors wrapping up their uh, 3A Northwest Conference season, and these two teams, the, the job is simple. 
win tonight, you're the three seed, lose tonight, and you are the four seed in the West Regional Tournament, which again will be hosted right here at Hot Springs County High School. So the Lady Cats would really want to get that three seed, but the Lady Warriors are going to try to play spoiler uh, in this one and try to uh, steal a victory here out on the road. The Lady Warriors have struggled a bit out on the road. This one, of course, a rivalry game, but they've started to kind of put things together. You'll hear from head coach Mark Mortimer here in just a little bit talking about the week of preparation and what he expects here in tonight's game. Should be a physical one, should be a fun one. This Lady Cat team, they went up to Lovell and took out the Lady Bulldogs, so you know what they are capable of. The Lady Warriors are going to have their hands full tonight. They did beat the Lady Cats in Worland 49-44 in a tightly contested battle uh, back Back in January, so the first time around was tight. Expect it to uh, continue that way throughout this one here tonight between the Lady Warriors and the Lady Cats. Jordan McKamey with you on the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show. We're going to take a quick break here on the other side. We'll go inside the matchup, take a look at uh, some of the relevant stats, some of the difference makers we can expect in this one here on a Thursday from Thermopolis High School. This is the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Over Construction, a Worland institution, is celebrating 60 years in business. McGarvin Moberly is a specialized construction company with a focus on highway rehabilitation, maintenance, and reconstruction. For as many years as they've been in business, they've supported Worland High School Athletics, and that tradition continues with the support of McKamey Broadcasting. McGarvin Moberly wishes good luck and success to all Worland Warrior and Lady Warrior teams this season. McGarvin Moberly, 60 years and counting. Go Warriors! Sally's Classic Pizza in Worland, the classiest pizza around. Sally's offers pizza made with fresh dough daily. Go with a classic single topping or loaded up with the king. Ten toppings in all. Friday, football and pizza is a winning combination. The Warrior Special is available all school year. Get a large two-topping pizza and a two-liter for just $16.98. Fridays only. Sally's Classic Pizza, 1214 Bighorn Avenue or call 347-2453. at the checkout line, grab some Pepsi minis, but get your own, because these are mine, mine, mine. Stellar Roofing and Construction in Worland offers roofing services, home renovation, and new home construction. Free estimates, plus they handle all insurance claims for a stress-free, streamlined process. Asphalt shingles, rubber roofs, TPO, and metal roofing. Bids for commercial or residential. Housing remodels, new construction, sidings, windows, concrete, and more. Stellar Roofing and Construction has the expertise and experience to get it done right. Stellar Roofing and Construction, 347-3289, or stop in at 1115 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. Ladies and gentlemen, are your diesel engines letting you down? Need a fix that's top-notch, fast, and reliable? DPS is your go-to destination. We are fueled by excellence and driven by expertise. From trucks to trailers, no job's too tough for our skilled crew. We've got the latest technology to get your diesel roaring again. Choose DPS where you decide and we provide. Stop in at 1051 North 10th Street in Worland. Call us 347-4410 or visit us on the web at dps307.com. And welcome back here on the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show. Jordan McKamey with you on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Rivalry night here in the Bighorn Basin. Worland Warriors, Thermopolis, Bobcats, or should I say Hot Springs County High School Bobcats. That one's more of a mouthful, so we'll just go with uh, Thermopolis. Bobcats in 3A Northwest Conference action. Three seed in the 3A West Regional Tournament on the line for both of these teams. A win for the Lady Warriors and Warriors. They are the three seed along and it is all but assured to be the four seed and taking on the number one from the other southwest side of the 3A West Conference. Let's go inside this matchup momentarily looking at the Lady Warriors and Lady Cats. Thermopolis coming in at 4-12 and 12 overall, 1-3 and three in the 3A Northwest that win against Lovell. The Lady Warriors coming in at 4 and 15, 1 and 4. Their one conference victory against these same Thermopolis Lady Cats. Looking at uh, some of the uh, scoring and other things for these two teams, both of them find themselves down near the bottom in team scoring. Worland averaging 35 points per game. Thermopolis closer to 34. In terms of shooting from the field, Thermopolis is 15th at 25.8%. Worland at 12th in the uh, in the state at uh, 32.7% from the field. 
Rebounding, it's been an issue for Whirlin. They're right down there with Thermopolis' 14 defense, improving Thermopolis, surrounding about 48 and a half points uh, per contest this season. Uh, so those are kind of some of the relevant stats looking at the overall matchup for these two teams. For the uh, Thermopolis Lady Cats, they're led in scoring by J.C. Owsley. Averages about 9.3 points per game. She's the leading scorer. Cameron Farrell coming in at 7.2 points per game. Dazlin Hunt at 5.5. The rest a smattering from the rest of the Lady Cat scores. For the Lady Warriors, uh, we know it. Nyeli Aguayo averaging about 8 points per contest. 7 for Yehida Aguayo. And then... About five for Mackenzie Ray. The rest of it, again, also the same. Kind of that smattering of offense the rest of the way. Maniah Peterson averaging about four and a half points per game. So we expect a defensive struggle here tonight, and I, I would be uh, surprised if it was anything but that. Would expect to be low scoring, but you never In its 24 years in Warland, King's Carpet One has become a trusted destination for homeowners and a valued member of the community. Discover our exciting new showroom, Room by Room, Designed to elevate your shopping experience. A family-owned business that's also a good neighbor. King's Carpet One supports many charities in Warland and throughout the Bighorn Basin. King's Carpet One. Giving our best to our customers and our community. The Warriors Supporters Shield. Join the war party. Thank you to the 468 or email mckamiebroadcasting at gmail.com. Hasco Industrial Supply is known for their industrial hoses, steel products, and trailers, but they'll surprise you with products for every customer. Check out Lazy One Clothing, matching pajamas, and more. Kill Tech Jackets for kids and adults, ready to protect you from old man winter. Stay cozy and stylish with Trail Crest Blankets. Stuck? Not a chance with Yankum Kinetic Ropes for every size ride. Give Hasco Industrial Supply a call at 347-6158 or stop in at 415 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. states for the past 70 years. Their modern and up-to-date equipment allows them to provide full-service solutions Welcome back inside the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. We're now joined by Moreland Lady Warrior head coach Mark Mortimer. Coach, final game of your 3A Northwest Conference season. Feels like destiny's in your hand for that 3C tonight. How important is this one for the ladies? Uh, by far, this is our most important game of the season. I know you kind of say that week to week, but uh, for seeding purposes, going into that regional, uh, a three makes a, a big difference in what you're going to see that opening game. So for us, we, we want to end up as a three seed, so this is huge for us tonight. Out on the road, hostile territory here in Thermopolis, obviously a rivalry game. How big would it be from a confidence standpoint for the ladies to get a win? Huge. Um, you know, you come into a game like this and we tell the kids, you know, it's regional atmosphere. It's going to be a ton of people here on both sides. Uh, every possession is important and you have to treat it like that. I mean, offense, defense, there can't be any giving possessions where, you know, we lose things defensively, turn it over offensively. So, uh, you know, that's the way we're approaching it. It's a regional game for us. What was the largest focus here in the few days of practice leading up to this one against the Lady Cats? I'm um, defensively just looking at all the different sets they've run in the last couple a week so uh their press breaks and uh, a lot of stuff offensively so we've concentrated uh, mostly defensively coming into this one how do you deal with maybe the emotions and that atmosphere in this building because it's going to be up even before the opening tip off uh, absolutely. We talk about, you know, the first couple minutes of the game, you have to match tempo. You got to take care of the basketball. You can't lose this thing in the first two or three minutes of the game where you're down six or eight and the crowd is into it and uh, it just goes uh, snowballs from there. We can't let that happen. Seems like you finally settled into a kind of a standard starting five. Some of that rotation that's going in now, do you feel like kind of the final pillars are starting to come together here heading to the postseason? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, with uh, the kids that we have starting now, uh, give us to ability in there and then the four kids that we have coming off the bench into the game uh, we've been given more and more playing time as the season has progressed and I I think we're seeing the benefits of that now especially you know you look at Katya and Maddie defensively for us so I think things are starting to fall into place 
Do you feel like the conditioning's maybe finally there? I know you've been asking a lot of a number of your stars out there for a lot of minutes. Do you feel like the conditioning's maybe finally there as you're rounding that corner towards the West Regional? Yeah, I think so. You know, they're finally asking for no more conditioning of practice, so I think we're where we want to be. Um, and I think you can definitely tell at all three levels. Uh, the kids, uh, they play four quarters, and I think we look really good out there. Coach, any final thoughts here before we let you get in the final preparations here in a rivalry game in the 3A Northwest against the Lady Cats Thermopolis? We could talk another half hour about final thoughts, but, uh, you know, we take care of the basketball in a big rivalry game like this. I think we're going to be okay tonight, and we really look forward to it. That's Whirling Lady Warrior head coach Mark Mortimer here on the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show. Lady Warriors, Lady Cats just minutes away here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Here in Wyoming, we live by the spirit of the Wild West. Now where the sun's a little brighter, where the snows that fall are a trifle wider, where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter, that's where the West begins. We're the bank that's with you wherever that spirit leads. Because we're more than a bank in Wyoming, we're Wyoming in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. McGarvin Moberly Construction, a Whirlin institution, is celebrating 60 years in business. McGarvin Moberly is a specialized construction company with a focus on highway rehabilitation, maintenance, and reconstruction. For as many years as they've been in business, they've supported Whirlin High School Athletics, and that tradition continues with the support of McKamey Broadcasting. McGarvin Moberly is a winning combination. The Warrior Special is available all school year. Get a large two-topping pizza and a two-liter for just $16.98. Friday's only. Only. Sally's Classic Pizza, 1214 Bighorn Avenue, or call 347-2453. I wish I was a little bit smaller, a mini shack baller. I wouldn't have to yell when I talk to a toddler. I wish I had more leg room on a plane or a train. Life is tough when you're taller. Yeah, I shop it big and tall. But when it comes to my Pepsi, I like to keep it nice and small. A soft drink for your pocket. So light and refreshing, one sip, don't knock it. So the next time you have to check out line, grab some Pepsi minis, but get your own. Because these are all mine, mine, mine. Welcome back here to the broadcast desk at Hot Springs County High School. McGarvin and Taylor pregame show rolling on here. Lady Warriors and Lady Cats set, getting set for 3A varsity girls basketball action on a Thursday night from Thermopolis High School. Three seed in the 3A Northwest Conference on the line. I uh, mentioned on our social media page, the uh, internet keeps sometimes will drop out here at Thermopolis High School. We're hoping it happens less and less consistently, but uh, do trust that it will buffer back out and get you to live action out here. I know it can be a little bit frustrating, but trust us, it will come back up here. As when it is connected, we have a plenty strong connection. We're just a handful of minutes away from the National Anthem and then our Northern Wyoming News starting lineups and opening tip-off here on a Thursday evening. Let's go into our keys to the game for the Lady Warriors. We'll start it out with find a fast start offensively and defensively. Get a couple of buckets early. Get some turnovers. Try to get some easy ones. Work it off maybe that full court press or and out of that half court shell. Get off to a quick fast start on both ends of the floor. Maybe try to take some of that early energy out of this building. Second, take care of the basketball and break the press. This is on the offensive side. It's all right to work the offense. It's all right to rest there. Run it through four or five times. However many it takes to generate a good shot and breaking that press, once you break it, Got to get rid of the chaos that it took sometimes to break it and get set into that offensive side of the uh, offensive side of the court. The Lady Warriors have done a good job of breaking presses, but then have turned the ball over in the front court as they kind of bring the chaos of the press break into the half court offense. Last, embrace a rivalry. It's a big game. It's as long as anyone can remember. Whirlin versus Thermopolis always circled on the calendar no matter the time no matter the sport no matter the day no matter the weather even if it's a blizzard much like this thursday evening for the lady warriors find a fast start on both sides of the basketball take care of the basketball break the press and final key to the game embrace the rivalry whirling lady warriors hot springs county lady bobcats 3a northwest conference varsity girls action coming your way here in less 
than a handful of minutes. That's going to wrap it up here on the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show. McGarvin and Taylor Real Estate, WorlandWYO.com, or call one of their talented specialists at 307-347-4271 for all your real estate needs in and outside of the Bighorn Basin. McGarvin and Taylor are fine. Pre-game show sponsor, big thank you out to Kitty Mortimer, one of our early supporters that got this broadcast going through McKamey Broadcasting via YouTube. So thank you to Kitty Mortimer and the team at McGarvin and Taylor Real Estate. We step aside as we wrap up the McGarvin and Taylor Real Estate show. On the other side, National Anthem, starting lineups, and the opening tip brought to you by the Northern Wyoming News. This is Lady Warrior Basketball on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Roofing and Construction in Worland offers roofing services, home renovation, and new home construction. Free estimates, plus they handle all insurance claims for a stress-free, streamlined process. Asphalt shingles, rubber roofs, TPO, and metal roofing. Bids for commercial or residential. Housing remodels, new construction, sidings, windows, concrete, and more. Stellar Roofing and Construction has the expertise and experience to get it done right. Stellar Roofing and Construction, 347-3289, or stop in at 1115 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. Ladies and gentlemen, are your diesel engines letting you down? Need a fix that's top-notch, fast, and reliable? DPS is your go-to destination. We are fueled by excellence and driven by expertise. From trucks to trailers, no job's too tough for our skilled crew. We've got the latest technology to get your diesel roaring again. Choose DPS where you decide and we provide. Stop in at 1051 North 10th Street in Worland. Call us 347-4410 or visit us on the web at dps307.com. In its 24 years in Worland, King's Carpet One has become a trusted destination for homeowners and a valued member of the community. Discover our exciting new showroom, Room by Room, designed to elevate your shopping experience. A family-owned business that's also a good neighbor, King's Carpet One supports many charities in Worland and throughout the Bighorn Basin. King's Carpet One, giving our best to our customers and our community. And welcome back inside of Hot Springs County High School. Northern Wyoming News starting lineups and the opening tip about to come your way. But, of course, first we will get into our national anthem here momentarily. So folks will rise here after our PA man gets his final uh, final announcements in here at uh, Thermopolis High School. Worland Lady Warriors, Thermopolis Lady Bobcats. Both teams looking for win number five of the season. Lady Warriors led out by head coach Mark Mortimer. Lady Cats led by head coach Steven Weinberger. So we will get ready for a national anthem, and as we have heard from the feedback, we want to uh, keep it live here on McKamey. National Anthem wrapped up here at Hot Springs County High School as we are now ready for our Northern Wyoming News starting lineups and opening tip-off here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Let's get into those starting lineups as we'll uh, start for the uh, Lady Cats. They'll go this way. Number two is Dazlin Hunt. Number five is Cameron Farrell. Number 10, J.C. Owsley. Number 14 is Hannah Hill. And number 30 is Austin Slagle. Lady Cats in their home whites, purple numbers, yellow trim, Thermopolis across the front of those jerseys. 
for the Worland Lady Warriors. They go this way. Number three, Madeline Glanz. Number 10, Nayeli Aguayo. Number 12, Taylor Simmons. Number 20, Manaya Peterson. And number 25, Mackenzie Ray. Glanz, Aguayo, Simmons, Peterson, and Ray for the Lady Warriors in the away blacks. Orange numbers, white trim, Worland across the front of the jerseys. Let's head to our uh, PA over the uh, PA mic to wrap up the introductions here at Hot Springs County High School. PA man here at Hot Springs County High School has finished up the introductions as we are now ready for our Northern Wyoming News opening tip off here on a Thursday night from Hot Springs County High School. George McCabe with you. Northern Wyoming News Thursday publications online subscriptions available yodaily.com wiodaily.com for the Northern Wyoming News. We appreciate their sponsorship. Manaya Peterson in the middle. She'll tip it up against Austin Slegel. And we're just about underway, and we are. Long tip back, tracked down here by Mackenzie Ray. Lady Warriors have the Northern Wyoming News opening tip off here and the opening possession as it's up with Aguayo. Give it off for Glanz. Come top of the key. Pinnacle Bank scoreboard rolling at 745. Aguayo back to the defense, hands it off for Ray. Goes in the corner for Peterson. Little zone pressure here from the Lady Cats and an early turnover as Peterson ran out of real estate there along the baseline. Full court pressure from the Lady Warriors. Ball comes in for Hunt. Takes a couple dribbles towards the middle of the floor. Back for Hill. Or excuse me, that's Farrell. Now Farrell will come into the front court to set it for the Lady Cats. Got a Get rid of the ball there, five count was on. Peterson, a pass fake there, get it for Simmons. Deep outside the perimeter now. Aguayo, left elbow, she'll go in, put up a wild shot. Banker won't go for the Lady Warriors. Lady Cats coming the other way. Up top here with Farrell, go outside for Dazlin. Hunt drives to the left elbow. Now it's with Owsley, she'll try a three. That one rattles in and out. Fortune for the Lady Warriors, nice rebound there by Maddie Glanz on the carom away. Almost lost the basketball, but rolls harmlessly over to Nayeli Aguayo. 6.23 to go here in quarter number one. Pinnacle Bank scoreboard, Lady Cats three, Lady Warriors nothing. Aguayo down the baseline, wide open backside. Peterson put up the shot, she couldn't hit it. Tapped out here to Simmons, three-point on the way for Aguayo. Deep two on the way right side, no. Followed her own shot, up fouled. She'll head to the free throw line for two. Foul on Cameron Farrell. Like that play by Madeline Glanz as she knew she was a little bit off on the three, followed up her own shot, got the rebound, nearly had the chance at the three-point play. So Glanz toes the charity stripe here and now will attempt number one. That one's a little bit too strong off the heel and out. Lady Warriors still looking for their first point of the game here. 2.20 into the opening quarter. 3-0 Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Second free throw. That one rattles down. Lady Warriors on the board here. 3-1. Thermopolis on top. Ball with Dazlin Hunt. Glam's going to hassle in the backcourt. Get it up now for Hannah Hill. She'll come. Join the war party. Thank you to the following war party members. Jay's Detail, 1626 U.S. Highway 20, 347-2071. Bryant Honey, Pure Wyoming Honey and Pollination Services. Sage Creek Land and Cattle Company. Bighorn Federal Savings Bank, 1006 Bighorn Avenue, 347-6196. Want to join the war party? Call 307-431-1468 or email McCamey Broadcasting at gmail.com. 
Good pace back and forth to start this one. Expected it's been a uh, defensive affair thus far. Lady Warriors held without a field goal in the first minute 36. 524 Pinnacle Bank scoreboard quarter number one. Nile Aguirre into your screen from the left side. Lady Warriors looking for their first from the field. Glands outside for Simmons. Dumps it in for Aguayo to the right elbow. Peterson lost the handle, collects. Simmons going back for Peterson, tipped out over the top there by Owlsley. Peterson wanted a foul there as it felt like Owlsley came through her back, but it's a sideline inbounds play here on the low right sideline. Ball comes in for Simmons. Peterson trying to seal off there again. Comes the elbow. Aguayo splits a couple of defenders inside out. Reaching foul there. Going to go against Thermopolis. Trying to deny the Aguayo drive. Foul goes on Hannah Hill. She's got the game's only field goal, the three-pointer. Lady Warriors with it underneath. Glands goes high up top for Simmons. Give it off for Ray. Peterson asking for it again, didn't get it. Skipped the pass for Simmons. Now a bouncer for Aguayo. Ray trying to fight in there, double team came down on her. Peterson for Aguayo, give and go. Peterson downhill she goes, hit off the foot of Slagle. Ooh, looked like it hit off the foot of Slagle and went out of bounds, but they say went right through the wickets and out of bounds. Turnover, Lady Warriors number two. Ball in for Hunt. Again, defended by Glanz in the backcourt. Uses a little bit of pace to beat it. Tipped up top, taken away by Peterson at midcourt. Give it for Mackenzie Ray. Has a player behind her. Ball's loose. Peterson on top of it. Taken away by Thermopolis. So the teams exchange turnovers. And the Lady Warriors get back in their defensive shell. And we're right back to where we started. Thermopolis basketball in the front court. 4.15 to go in the first quarter. Crossover from Farrell down the hill to the hoop. Shot up. No good, but two shots coming. First foul going to go on Taylor Simmons for the Lady Warriors. So Guayos there, takes on a couple of defenders up through contact. She'll head to the free throw line to start it. 3.55 to go quarter number one. Two-point game on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. 5-3 Thermopolis. Lady Warriors trying to take away that entry pass, but then go into the half-court shell. Ooh, Farrell nearly <laughs> slid to the floor with that and kept her footing nicely, though. Cats downhill. Here goes Hannah Hill. Inside out for Farrell. Owlsley provides the outlet. Go inside for Slagle. Yehida Gua doing the defending. A little bit too strong there, and yehida has got the rebound. Yehida's really positioned herself well on the uh, defensive side of the rebounding. Yehida Gua in transition for three from Nielli. Couldn't finish it off, though. Got an open look as Nielli was driving down the lane. Kicked it out to Yehida, but couldn't find the three-point range. Farrell with it now. Into the left corner for Hill. She'll dribble, get to the right elbow, come across the free throw line. Now Owsley, a little bit of lane opens up all the way to the hoop. Right hand from the left side is up and good for J.C. Owsley. 7-3 as the Lady Warriors still without a field goal here at the 250 mark of quarter number one. Katya Navarro now. Give it for Maddie Robertson. Mackenzie Ray. Nayeli Aguayo into the left corner for Yahida. Couple of back downs. Goes down the lane. Strong move there. Up off glass and good. Nice little uh, dribble drive there down the left baseline by Yahida Aguayo. 7-5, and the Lady Warriors have finally put in a field goal here at the 225 mark. Farrell, straight downhill she goes. Inside out, Owsley. Shot fake, now dribble drives, going to work against Aguayo. Aguayo left her feet there, throw it into the middle, found Slagle. And Dazlin Hunt outside Hannah Hill for another three, and she got it. Hit a pair of them so far on the night. She's the shooter for the Lady Cats. And she's got a pair. Robertson going to go downhill against Farrell. Left it short. Fight for the rebound. Backside for Hill. Lady Warriors have gotten some look. Lady Warriors as they'll inbounds it now in the backcourt. Minute 20 to play. Down by seven. Aguayo going to be aggressive all the way to the hoop. Through contact, she'll get to the free throw line. Like the aggression there from Nayeli Aguayo. Dazlin Hunt going to pick up the foul here. 
Not a lot of changes thus far. Going to see some changes come in here after free throw number one. It's like Shea Whitlock and Manaya Peterson going to come back in, in and out, and back down. Rattled around, thought about hopping up, but went down the hole. Three of three start from the free throw line for Nayeli Aguayo as Yahida Aguayo and Mackenzie Ray check out. Mentioned it. Shea Whitlock wearing the number zero tonight. And Manaya Peterson into the game. Second one is up and good. So five of the Lady Warriors. Robertson hassled here by Hill. Give it now for Katja Navar going downhill. Had a good cut there, but lost it. Lady Cats coming the other way with Hill. Kick it up top for Hunt. Back for Hill. Sees a little bit of room down the baseline. Back for Ida King. Lady Cats moving the ball well here in the first quarter. Farrell all the way to the hoop. Up too strong, no good. Peterson with a strong rebound. About a half minute to go here in the quarter. Lady Warriors going to try to find some offense this time around. Aguayo, handoff for Robertson. Back now for Navarro. Top of the key. Sees a little bit of room here. Left her feet. In As Navarro... Going to get it in. Aguayo's got to go quickly. Not sure if she saw the clock here. Throws it up. And no good the length of the court. One quarter in the books here from Hot Springs County High School. Lady Cats 14. Lady Warriors 7 on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Back after this on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Asco Industrial Supply is known for their industrial hoses, steel products, and trailers, but they'll surprise you with products for every customer. Check out Lazy One Clothing, matching pajamas, and more. Kill Tech Jackets for kids and adults, ready to protect you from old man winter. Stay cozy and stylish with Trail Crest Blankets. Stuck? Not a chance with Yankum Kinetic Ropes for every size ride. Give half. Lady Warriors held to one field goal in that opening quarter of basketball, find themselves down by seven. Two threes from Hannah Hill, maybe the big difference in the quarter for the Lady Cats. Five of Lady Warriors, seven from the free throw line on the other side, only two free throws for the 14 points for the Lady Cats. Farrell's still in there. Simmons going to defend, going to go to a little more of a zone look here as Whitlock will defend against Landon around the top of the key. Hunt ran out of room, give it down the baseline for Hill, and she finds her range again. Hill off to a hot start. She's got eight of the 16, half the points for the Lady Cats, and Lady Warriors need to find some points here this time around. Maddie Glanz dribbles around some pressure. Aguayo, Peterson dribbles towards Simmons. Get it inside for Aguayo, going towards the paint as she is fouled. Loose ball ended up in the hands of Maddie Glanz, but not before the foul. White gonna, uh, foul going to go on Ina King. King with her first. Lady Cats first of the quarter. Baseline inbounds play from the left baseline for Maddie Glanz. Going to look for an option. Finally does come in for Whitlock, then throws it into trouble. Able to track it down. Ripped out of bounds there by Ina King. And the Lady Warriors will reset there. Whitlock got herself in a little bit of trouble there, but good hustle play to keep the possession alive. Glam's going to inbounds. Easier this time for Peterson. Goes towards the baseline. Almost lost the dribble. And a foul now going to go against Landon. A little bit too much body pressure there against Peterson. So now go for a right baseline inbounds play for the Lady Warriors. 7-10 to go in the second quarter. Trailing it by nine. Ball comes in for Aguayo. Got past a couple of defenders. Tried to scoop it up and in. No good. Fight for it on the ground. That's going to be a jump ball. So Lady Warriors going to get attempt number four of this possession here. See if they can capitalize and make it count. Ball going to come in now for Simmons outside the perimeter. Get it up top for Aguayo. Back in the corner for Whitlock. Now Simmons almost had that intercepted. And it is taken away by Hunt. Tried to go quickly around the horn there, but Hunt jumped the pass, and the Lady Warriors now got to defend. Cameron Farrell at the right, free throw extended. Crossovers get in the lane, bank shot up and good. Lady Warriors now trail it by double digits, down by 11, 18 to 7. Aguayo goes downhill now against Hunt. Little nice move there, little fake one way, went the other way, and again, 
The lid stays on for a while, but she'll head to the free throw line as the foul's going to go against Maggie Landon, her second. So Guile, four points in the game so far, all of them from the free throw line. First one up, no good. Guile has the ball back now after a couple of changes here for the squads, and the second one is able to go. Lady Warriors back within 10. So we'll see Chloe Owsley come into the game. Ball in for Slagle. Now it's taken away by Aguayo. Backs it down. Glance thought about the three, walked with it. Lady Warriors, every time they've forced a turnover, they've given it right back there. And I like the idea by Glance be aggressive, but got those feet moving before putting the ball on the deck. Ball in now for Hunt. Wow, defending. Hunt going to use the pace to push into the front court now. First touch for Chloe Owsley. Almost lost it, but able to recover there. Yehida Aguayo poked it away, who came into, uh, came into the game here momentarily. Ball up on a jump shot, rolls around, up and good for Chloe Owsley. And it is just the uh, hoop is accepting the Lady Cat shots, and it's denying the Lady Warriors 20-8 to eight here. Timeout on the floor. At Hot Springs County High School, Lady Cats 20, Lady Warriors 8. This is Lady Warrior Basketball on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Trucking is a family-owned and operated company in Worland, Wyoming, offering trucking services for a host of industries. They have done extensive work in Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, and Colorado, as well as surrounding Rocky Mountain states for the past 70 years. Their modern and up-to-date equipment allows them to provide full-service solutions for their customers' needs, from start to completion. Swing Trucking, 347-4161. Swing Trucking is a proud supporter of McKamey Broadcasting and Worland High School Athletics. Here in Wyoming, we live by the spirit of the Wild West. Now where the sun's a little brighter, where the snows that fall are a trifle wider, where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter, that's where the West begins. Get back to our friends from uh, Pinnacle Bank here in uh, just a little bit here as we come back to live action. Both teams breaking out of the full timeout early. 5.50 to go in the first half. 20-8 lead for Thermopolis. Glams going downhill. Finds it for Peterson. Reach-in foul. Going to go on Dazlin Hunt, her second. Baseline inbounds. Get it in for Yehida Aguayo. Hold high here against Chloe Owsley. Turns her back. Gets it up top for Peterson. Simmons was asking for it out on the left wing. Got it now. She'll look to drive. Puts up a... Strong shot off the backboard, no good. Peterson had it, then had it stripped away here. Farrell running the floor. Owsley to her left. Nobody stopped the uh, driver there and got all the way to the hoop, and she'll go to the line for two. Haida Aguayo going to pick up the foul. Lady Warriors as they try to... Uh, Chip their way back into this one. Going to need a defensive stop here to start it, though. Farrell for Hill. Offensive foul on an illegal moving screen there by J.C. Owsley. Her first. That's the fourth of the quarter. Actually, fifth of the quarter. Next one will put the Lady Warriors at the line. Usually, you'd see shooting starting at five. But since it was an offensive foul, there's uh, no shots. Lady Warriors out there. Glanz, Aguayo, Aguayo, Simmons, and Peterson. Yehida deep outside left wing. Three off the back iron. No good. Hannah Hill grabs the rebound. Sorry about the camera work as we were in the backcourt where there was no play. Apologies about that. 5.04 to go in the first half. Farrell trying to go downhill. Shut off there. Now Hill with it. Drop it off. Farrell and ticking away here in half number one. Farrell with eight points in the game. Now another three on the way here. This one from Chloe Owsley, no good. Maddie Glams with the rebound. Lady Warriors going to try to press the other way. Aguayo 
Looks to her right, hands off for Glam. Straight away three pointer. That one's also no good. So three straight trips, three open looks from downtown. None of them hit for the Lady Warriors. Still only one field goal in the half. Halfway through quarter number two. Four minutes ago, 24 8 Lady Cats. Three on the way here for Owlsley. Too strong. Nice job by Natalie to go out to get a strong rebound. Simmons up the left side here. Owlsley trying to defend, does get back. Lady Warriors trying to go up top, and it's loose and taken away. About three Lady Warriors arrived at the same spot at the same time. Nothing good happened there. Lady Warriors got to stop defensively, but couldn't, uh, couldn't generate anything on the offensive side. Hill, a little backdoor cut there. Now go outside first time for Charlie Slegel, and she walked with it. Turnover number four for Thermopolis. Katya Navarro, Mackenzie Ray out there. Lady Warriors are going to have to start to try to force it to the inside, try to play the inside-out game. They've been settling for the uh, deep three-pointer a little too often as Austin Slagle checks back in for the Lady Cats. All around the long rebound. Ball coming inside Slagle. Now Farrell. Find it for Hannah Hill. Shooters open. Left wing in and out and down. Hannah Hill with 11 points here in the half, and it's almost a 20-point lead at 19, 27 to 8. Katya Navarro. Hassled here by Hill and a reach in. That'll send Navarro to the free throw line. Hannah Hill picks up her second. Katya will go to the line. Katya Navarro. Navarro on the season hasn't attempted a lot of free throws, just three of eight, according to our uh, stats. Going to try to improve on that here. First one up, a little bit too short, no good. Naeli Aguayo back in for Mania Peterson. Two shot is up and good, and right now the floodgates are open for the Lady Cats up 29 to 8. Here's Naeli Aguayo straight down the lane, puts up the shot, and she picks up a charge there as Slagle hit the deck. Wow, tried to be aggressive, but Slagle was in the right spot down near the low right block, took the hit. And the first foul there against Nyali Aguayo. Lady Warriors only committed three fouls. 2.18 to go. Just any time Lady Warriors try to cut into this momentum for the Lady Cats, they just haven't been able to do it. Farrell, 10-second call against her. Lady Warriors able to force a turnover. Nice defense there combined between Simmons and Nyali Aguayo. Ball inbounds now. Tell Nyali Aguayo wants to be aggressive here, trying to shepherd her Lady Warriors around. Glam's going to go to the right baseline. Back out, Katya Navarro. Into the lane she goes. Puts up the shot. No good. Foul on the floor. Going to go on Hannah Hill. That's her third. And Katya Navarro back to the uh, line there. I like when the lane opens up. Doesn't matter what Lady Warrior it is. They're attacking the paint. That's what you got to do, try to generate some of these buckets. But, man, how many and one opportunities would they have had if just even half of them had gone down as uh, Navarro now 0 of 3 from the land of the free. Taylor Simmons out. Yehida Aguayo in. 157 to go here in the half. Navarro's second up, and that one swishes through Lady Warriors. Trail it by 20, 29 to 9, Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Looking for defensive stops each and every time up the court. Dazzlin Hunt back into the game, goes to the right side, handed off for Farrell. Back for Hunt. Skip it for Chloe Owsley. Hunt now pulls up at the free throw line. Nice contest there by the Lady Warriors and out of bounds. It'll be. Lady Warrior basketball off the miss there. Good hustle by Austin Slagle to try to keep it in bounds, but uh, could not. As Nayeli Agua, we're going to bring the ball up the floor here for the Lady Warriors. Minute 30 to go. Ball for Navarro. Inside out. Yahada Agua open for three. That one's off. No good. Long rebound for Maddie Glantz. Baseline jumper up. A little too strong as well. Cameron Farrell has the rebound. Two more good looks for the Lady Warriors won't go down. Farrell the other way, driving, going to take on the bigs, reach in foul there. Going to go on Matty Glams. Dazzlin Hunt to inbounds, gets it in now for Maggie Landon. Farrell for Owsley, trying to free up Hunt. And that's going to be a foul on Yahida Guayo, trying to get through the screen set there by Slagle. 
little too physical that time around, trying to get out and defend that per, the three-point line. Ball comes in now for Farrell. Owsley, Landon, Hunt. Low dribble here. You had a Guau trying to track her there. Navarro nearly dove in and took that away. Good defense there by the Lady Warriors. Less than a minute to play in the opening half of the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard, 29-9. Guau tried to take that away from Farrell. Now has to backtrack. Now Hunt going to dribble to the right elbow. Turn around shot from 12 feet. Up around, no good. Navarro has the rebound. She can use the dribble here to get to midcourt. Goes past Chloe Owsley. Give it now for Mackenzie Ray. Trying to go back for Navarro out of bounds. It'll stay Lady Warrior basketball. Check in here for the Lady Counts. Each in foul going to go against Maddie Glanz there. Maybe a little bit of frustration there as Glanz will pick up her second and send the Lady Counts to the free throw line with 18.4 to go here in the half, trailing 29-9. Lady Warriors, one field goal in the game, two points in the second quarter as that puts the check-in Jones at the free throw line up and good. Right now, feels like any Lady Cat could score here. To check our numbers there. That one's no good. Long rebound out for Katya Navarro. A lot of bump there, but Navarro, they say, wasn't fouled. Out for Mackenzie Ray. Back for Navarro. Down the lane she goes. Takes on a defender, and she'll head back to the free throw line. Katya been about the most aggressive player for the Lady Warriors. Morgan Jones with the foul, so we did have the name right. They had a uh, Cadence Bowman, so I wanted to just confirm that as Navarro's had a little tough time from the free throw strength. Oh, uh, one of five now. Lady Warriors trying to get to double digits with just nine seconds left here in the first half, trailing by 21. Second one up, around, and down. Nine seconds of defending left to do here for the Lady Warriors. Ball going to come in now. Dazzlin Hunt picks it up. She'll push towards the front court. Going to try to use the pace. Does to the left, to the right wing. Give it outside now. Hunt, long three on the way. Banker won't go. Got the pass back from Charlie Slagle. We are at the halftime mark here at Hot Springs County High School. It's been all Lady Cats leading it 30-10 to 10 on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard halftime show. Coming your way next, we'll have a stat wrap for you from the first 16 minutes. Have a quick preview towards the boys' contest coming up. A little bit later on here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network, and we'll check in on the keys of the game and look at the second half action all on the halftime show coming right next on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Wherever that spirit leads, because we're more than a bank in Wyoming, we're Wyoming in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. McGarvin Moberly Construction, a Worland institution, is celebrating 60 years in business. McGarvin Moberly is a specialized construction company with a focus on highway rehabilitation, maintenance, and reconstruction. For as many years as they've been in business, they've supported Worland High School Athletics, and that tradition continues with the support of McKamey Broadcasting. McGarvin Moberly wishes good luck and success to all Worland Warrior and Lady Warrior teams this season. McGarvin Moberly, 60 years in just 1698. Friday's only Sally's Classic Pizza, 1214 Bighorn Avenue, or call 347 2453. Hello? I wish I was a little bit smaller, a mini shack baller. I wouldn't have to yell when I talk to a toddler. I wish I had more leg room on a plane or a train. Life is tough when you're taller. Yeah, I shop it big and tall. But when it comes to my Pepsi, I like to keep it nice and small. A soft drink for your pocket. So light and refreshing, one sip, don't knock it. So the next time you're at the checkout line, grab some Pepsi minis, but get your own. Because these are all mine, mine, mine. Stellar Roofing and Construction in Worland offers roofing services, home renovation, and new home construction. Free estimates, plus they handle all insurance claims for a stress-free, streamlined process. Asphalt shingles, rubber roofs, TPO, and metal roofing. Bids for commercial or residential. Housing remodels, new construction, sidings, windows, concrete, and more. Stellar Roofing and Construction has the expertise and experience to get it done right. Stellar Roofing and Construction, 347-3289, or stop in at 1115 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. 
And welcome back inside of Hot Springs County High School. Halftime score, Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Thermopolis Lady Bobcats 30, Worland Lady Warriors 10. Lady Warriors held to three points in the second quarter, held to one field goal in that opening half compared to 11 field goals for the Lady Cats. Only four of their 30 from the free throw line for the Lady Cats, eight of the Lady Warrior 10 coming from the charity stripe. Let's go into a halftime scoring wrap for you. For the Lady Cats, Chloe Owsley with two, eight for Cameron Farrell, two for J.C. Owsley, two for Ina King. Midway through quarter number one. Well, actually late on in the first quarter for you. Hi, so the Lady Warriors going to go look for answers offensively in the halftime locker room. Always tough when you have a half like that in a game that you know you need to win. You're down by 20. It's not over. 16 minutes of basketball left. Lady Cats have been hot. Expect them to come back to the mean. The Lady Warriors have been cold, and I mean ice cold. Lady Warriors have just had nothing go down. And it's not for the lack of good shots. They've had good shots. They've gotten inside. They've taken drives to the bucket. They've gotten open looks from three. I don't think head coach uh, Mark Mortimer would be here at the halftime. Hopefully we'll get a uh, post-game talk with him. Of course, we'll have our post-game chat with head coach Mark Mortimer at the halftime of the boys' game. 20 to 30 to 10, Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Lady Cats on top of the halftime mark. Back next on the McKinney Broadcasting Network. Ladies and gentlemen, are your diesel engines letting you down? Need a fix that's top-notch, fast, and reliable? DPS is your go-to destination. We are fueled by excellence and driven by expertise. From trucks to trailers, no job's too tough for our skilled crew. We've got the latest technology to get your diesel roaring again. Choose DPS where you decide and we provide. Stop in at 1051 North 10th Street in Worland. Call us 347-4410 or visit us on the web at dps307.com. In its 24 years in Worland, King's Carpet One has become a trusted destination for homeowners and a valued member of the community. Discover our exciting new showroom, Room by Room, designed to elevate your shopping experience. A family-owned business that's also a good neighbor, King's Carpet One supports many charities in Worland and throughout the Bighorn Basin. King's Carpet One, giving our best to our customers and our community. Back here at Hot Springs County High School, head coach Aaron Abel did find us. Uh, coach, glad you gave us a little bit of your time. Rivalry night here at Hot Springs County High School. Both teams hungry to try to seal what they're going to be in the 3A West Regional, looking for that number three seed. What's the most important thing tonight for these Warriors? I think, first of all, uh, and you're seeing it in this girls' game, you've got to match their mops energy anytime you come down here. This is their Super Bowl. This is what they really get. This is the game that's been highlighted and, and circled on their calendar all year. Um, so you have to be ready for that. They're going to come and play with a lot of in intensity and, and fire. And if you're not going to match that, our boys have to avoid the, the poison that would be thinking you beat Lovell, they lost to Lovell, there go, you will beat Thermopolis. Um, the Team A beat Team B, so you beat Team C thing does not work, and, and so that's the first challenge our boys have to face is the mental one. Are you ready to match the energy they have? They're going to be a desperate team. They haven't been at home in a couple of weeks. Um, obviously, this is, this is a big game for them. Um, are you ready to, to match what they have? That's the first question. Coach, speaking on that, do you feel like the two tight games last week and maybe prepared the Warriors for that, knowing that nothing's easy, especially this late in the season? I hope so. I hope we're continuing to to try to peak at the right time. You know, that's that's what this time of year is all about as you get into mid to late February and, and March is, is are you playing your best basketball? And last week we can say yes. Now can we string a couple of good games, a couple of good weeks together? Um, I hope so, but that's the challenge. Coach, I know you're always trying to work in a few new wrinkles and things here and there for this uh, squad. What was the main focus of practice to get prepared for not only this game, but of course Lander later on this week? Uh, we just talked a lot about keeping the rubber band tight. You know, the old rubber bat, you'll continue to grow and improve. We still believe that we haven't played our bas best basketball yet. Uh, it's it started with our defense and shutting down good players last week on both Powell and Lovell was the key to our success. Tonight we've got another challenge with Armani Dukes and Cody Bomagin and uh, Brady Potter and uh, Zach Hasty, kind of leading the offensive charge for Thermopolis. Can we do a good job 
matching up with guys like that and limiting their their offensive success. Well, Coach, first of all, if you made it to Super Bowl Sunday on your New Year's resolution, first of all, congratulations. <laughs> Whatever the first Sunday was of the year, mine were gone. But uh, <laughs> any final thoughts here as we're heading towards the uh, Lady Warriors and Lady Cats are just moments away from uh, getting going here in half number two. As uh, appreciate the coach taking the time, 30-10 to 10 on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. You know what? It's one possession at a time here for the Lady Warriors. That's all that you can do. It's Lady Cat basketball to start the second half here. First job, defensive stop here to start half number two. Glanz, Aguayo, Simmons, Ray, and Katya Navarro out there for the Lady Warriors. Farrell, Hunt, Hill, Slagle, and Owlsley for the Lady Cats. Farrell, dribble drive, kick out for Owsley, shot fake, trying to go down the lane here, taken away by Aguayo, now free the other way as Katya Navarro striding to the bucket, up and good with the right hand. That is how you would draw it up if you were the uh, Warrior coaching staff there, an easy bucket to start quarter number three, 30-12. Farrell going to go to the low left block, back for Slagle, and a foul there with the body by Ray, tried to recover in time, but couldn't get back there. Slagle missed the shot, but she'll get two free throws. First foul on Mackenzie Ray and the Lady Warriors here in half number two. First one up around over the front, kiss the back and down. That one touched nearly all parts of the cylinder there for Slagle as she knocks the first one down. Thermopolis big, second one on the way, a little bit more of a frozen rope ball tipped around, and that has just been the way it's gone for the Lady Warriors. Ball inside out, Hunt going to try to take on Ray, but then she walked with it there, so the ball is going to go back to the Lady Warriors. 31-12, 7.22 to go in the third quarter. Naeli Agua going to set into the offense for the first time here in half number two. Glantz saw a little bit of space, go all the way to the hoop, a little bit too strong there. Backside rebound for Hunt. Looks up the floor, picked up by Agua, going to keep dribbling there towards the right baseline, kick it up top for Farrell. Was open for three, pass it up, Slagle open again. Ray tried to defend, finally did in the end, and got the rebound. Ball comes for Simmons, now Aguayo. It's an uneven break here. Aguayo going to go all the way to the hole, take on Hunt. That one's up, no good. Mackenzie Ray, the rebound, and got to be a foul there, and it was finally whistled a little bit late, but got it right. And Hannah Hill picks up the foul. That's the fourth on the uh, shooter there, so that'll be foul number four on her. Well, we have four, they have three, so... Must have attributed her an extra somewhere along the way. Mackenzie Ray at the free throw line. First trip there today, and the first one is up and good for the Lady Warriors. Much of the body there. Lady Warriors nearly had another takeaway and sprint out. Three-pointers been a weapon. Five of them down now for the Lady Cats. Owsley in the lane, kicks it inside out. Balls high over the top. Hunt's able to track it down as Navarro didn't see it go over the uh, head of Hunt. Hunt dribbles right down the lane, goes Owsley, kick it out for Slagle, was open. Simmons nearly tipped that away, but Farrell to the baseline as Ray goes straight up there. A little bit of physicality there, but no whistle. We'll say Lady Cat basketball underneath, 34-13 to 13 your score after the Owsley three last time around. Ball going to come high up over the top for Owsley. Settles things down now, wants to... Maggie Landon checks into the game. You hide a guile for the Lady Warriors. Warriors looking for a bucket this time around. Navarro saw a little bit of space, closed quickly. You hide a guile across the free throw line. Nice backdoor cut. Nayeli Aguayo up and good. Aguayo's got her first field goal of the day. Great ball movement and off ball movement that time by the Lady Warriors. Great backdoor cut by Nayeli for the two. Farrell crosses over, left elbow, now tries to get it back for Slagle and does. Slagle going to back down against Ray. Hunt, high dribble, settles, gives for Slagle. Back for Hunt, quick snap three, right corner, no good. Good position in there by Mackenzie Ray as Nyeli Aguao brings it down against the pressure of Hunt. Outside for Navarro. Back to the right wing now for Yehida. Skip it across for Glantz. She'll take on a three. Lady Warriors wanted it but didn't get it. Farrell backside rebound for the Lady Cats. Again, another good look from the outside. Head coach Mark Warner wouldn't be upset with it. Just won't go down from the outside. Lady Warriors have not connected on a triple this game. Great 
cut there by Farrell. Was able to save it. Oh, it wasn't able to save it inbound. Stepped on the baseline there. That was a great cut. Just the pass wasn't there. Ina King into the game. Austin Slagle out. Didn't see any changes for the Lady Warriors. Navarro has it. High right wing. Give it for Glanz. Going to try to go downhill. Nearly lost it. It's able to collect it. Back for Yehida Aguayo. Inside for Nayeli Aguayo. Pulls up over King. Push shot is up and good. Back-to-back buckets. Nayeli Aguayo on the lead down to 17. 34-17. Pinnacle Bank scoreboard back after this on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. The Warriors Supporters Shield. Join the war party. Thank you to the following war party members. Jay's Detail, 1626 U.S. Highway 20, 347-2071. Bryant Honey, Pure Wyoming Honey and Pollination Services. Sage Creek Land and Cattle Company. Bighorn Federal Savings Bank, 1006 Bighorn Avenue, 347-6196. Want to join the war party? Call 307-431-1468 or email Broadcasting at gmail.com. 34-17, your score. Good open to the half for the Lady Warriors, outscoring the Cats 7-4. Really the uh, only dagger so far for Thermopolis was that J.C. Owsley 3, but then she fouled her fourth time, and Hannah Hill's on the bench with uh, three of them. So now the Lady Warriors going to go into a full-court press. Ball's going to be for Landon. We'll look for help. Go backside now for Farrell. Glanz was there, but now a little pace beats her. Ken Farrell on the season, a 57% free throw shooter traditionally, but has had a much better night tonight, 5 of 6. Second one on the way, and we're back uh, to a 19-point game at 36-17. to 17. Nayeli Aguayo comes left side, 3.53 to go here in the third quarter. Pinnacle Bank score. Nice drive there by Katya Navarro right to the bucket, up with the left hand and good. Saw a little bit of space, exposed it, sliced through the lane and finishes with the left hand off glass. 36-19. Lady Warriors need to start stacking up some stops here as the gets late on in the third quarter as Farrell nearly hit the deck. Chloe Owsley now with it, needs some help, goes outside for Hannah Hill. Hill trying to go to the baseline, throw it way up top for Farrell, open for three. That Quick offensive possession for the Lady Warriors. Farrell outside Chloe Owsley. Now Hannah Hill. She'll look to dribble to the top. Finds it. King nearly had it taken away by Aguayo, and it is. Now it's a – they're going to call a foul on Aguayo? No, it's going to be on Ina King. Yeah, I think they're going to call that on Ina King. That was a nice job by Aguayo to strip it away. King kind of played through Aguayo that time, and she's going to get a quick break here. Maddie Robertson going to come into the game for Aguayo momentarily. 2.40 to go here in the quarter. Lady Warriors need some offense. Robertson nearly had it taken away. Navarro straight down the lane, gives it for Simmons. Almost stepped out of bounds there, but stays in. You hide Aguayo open for three. Right wing, too strong, no good. Great look for Yehida that time again. It's just been... A struggle from the outside for the Lady Warriors. Probably 10 or 11 shots from the outside, and the Lady Warriors have come up empty. And a number of them have been, wa- been really open shots. Nice job by Katya Navarro. As that one was tipped, it hit the underside of the standard. Not sure why they stopped play there. If it hits the top of it, I understand, but not the bottom. That was odd. Ball's in for Farrell now. Lady Warrior defense has really ratcheted up intensity. Navarro nearly took it away from Farrell again. Farrell moves here to the uh, right side of the perimeter. Now for Hunt. Lost it, went up, walked with it there. Picked up the dribble and then jumped high to try to get rid of it and fell back down, turnover. Again, Lady Warrior defense has been good, but they only chipped away three points of that 20-point halftime deficit. Got to find some offense here late on. Quarter number three, 2.03 to go in the quarter. Ball outside here for Simmons. Had it poked away in the middle, somehow got it back, and now reach and foul. Ina King going to pick up another one. Fourth on the Lady Cats here of the quarter. Change coming in. Austin Slagle going to come back in for Ina King. Baseline inbounds left uh, or right baseline here for Yehida Aguayo. Navarro was open, and now an illegal screen going the other way. 
Maddie Robertson gets tagged for the illegal screen there. Every time it seems like something goes right for the Lady Warriors, flips right on them and then uh, comes back at them. Ball in for Hunt, now Farrell. Navarro going to defend through the back court here. Going to look over at the crossover. Good dribble that time by Farrell to get into the front court. Hunt down the lane she goes. Drop it off for Slagle and had to go out, put her hand down there. It wasn't straight up defense, and that's why she's going to get tagged for the foul. Got most. Slagle eyes the target here after a couple of dribbles and knocks it through. 37-19 your score. Ball in from McGuire to Robertson. Pushes quickly up the floor now into the front court. Give it off for Whitlock. Now Navarro. High exchange. Navarro for Simmons. Open for three. That one's a little too strong. Ball tipped around, and that'll be Navarro over the top there. And that'll put the Lady Cats at the free throw line. Navarro with her second personal sixth of the quarter on the Lady Warriors. So we'll come the other side for free throws here in the last minute 26 of this quarter. Hannah Hill there now at the free throw line. Hill just a 36% free thrower, missed the first. Hill sets for number two, looks better than is. Back to an 19-point lead, 38-19. to 19. Lady Warriors up ahead. Well, more than a minute to play. Navarro downhill. Robertson now goes into the lane, takes on Slagle at the hoop, and that one won't go down either. Slagle nearly walked with it there, but now give it for Farrell. Somebody's got to stop the ball handler there. Finally, Simmons is able to. Nice swat away there by Whitlock and out of bounds. Ball's going to come in now for Owlsley and tipped away by Navarro. Stays here with the Lady Cats. Good defense. Navarro's been playing at a high energy on uh, both sides of the ball. Hunt gets it in for Chloe Owlsley. Up top now for Farrell. Picked up the dribble. Needs some help. Find it in Dazzlin Hunt. Hunt wants to drive. Ran into a couple of Lady Warriors, but then Slagle there to clean it up down low. It's a good block by the Lady Warriors, but just ended up. Slagle was crashing the glass, and it fell right into her hands. Biggest lead of the day at 21 here. Lady Warriors had the advantage in the quarter, but now find themselves down by 21. Simmons puts up a hot runner there from the right block. No good. Owsley has it. Now gives for Farrell. Whitlock. Good double team there. Now the ball is thrown up and good for Maddie. Nice job. Katya Navarro. Has really been playing well here in this game. She's picked up extra minutes here recently as Hunt tries to drive ahead with 10 seconds to go. Now Hill. Slagle wanted it. Five seconds, four seconds, three seconds, two. Swatted away there by Navarro. Got to put it up. Couldn't go the length of the court there. Missed it on the uh, video, but put it up after the buzzer. End of three. Lady Cats 40. Lady Warriors 21. Fourth quarter. Your way next on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. I was a little bit smaller, a mini shack baller. I wouldn't have to yell when I talk to a toddler. I wish I had more leg room on a plane or a train. Life is tough when you're taller. Yeah, I shop it big and tall. But when it comes to my Pepsi, I like to keep it nice and small. A soft drink for your pocket. So light and refreshing, one sip, don't knock it. So the next time you have to check out line, grab some Pepsi minis, but get your own. Because these are all mine, mine, mine. Stellar Roofing and Construction in Worland offers roofing services, home renovation, and new home construction. Free estimates, plus they handle all insurance claims for a stress-free, streamlined process. Asphalt shingles, rubber roofs, TPO, and metal roofing. Bids for commercial or residential. Housing remodels, new construction, sidings, windows, concrete, and more. Stellar Roofing and Construction has the expertise and experience to get it done right. Stellar Roofing and Construction, 347-3289, or stop in at 1115 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. Lady Warrior basketball to start the fourth quarter. Drop off for Maddie Robertson. Now Navarro. Simmons wants it. Goes down the baseline to take on J.C. Owsley. Gives it right out in front for Nyeli Aguayo for the two. Nice job there by the Lady Warriors to uh, start the fourth quarter. 
A little pressure in the backcourt now, but back it off here from the Lady Warriors. Couldn't take away the entry pass as Robertson will defend against Farrell. She'll move off to her left, nearly walked with it there. Owsley wanted it backside, but there's Navarro again with another tip away. Good job there by Navarro. Back and into the waiting hands of Farrell. Like the look there, Robertson was open, got a good shot again. Ball just wouldn't go down. Now she'll work on the defensive pressure on Farrell. Nearly took it away. Farrell leaning in, puts up an awkward shot, got it to go. All you can say is a tip of the cap to Farrell because that was great defense. Just in the end, a little bit better offense. Back to a 19-point game. Simmons to the right elbow, puts up a shot there, and two shots coming. Almost got that mid-range jumper to go. Foul goes against Charlie Schlegel. First foul of the quarter on either team. 6.40 to go in this one as Simmons at the line looking for her first points of the evening. Pushes it up and good. 42-24 as Maddie Glanz comes in for Katya Navarro. One more here for Simmons. That one's a little too strong, wouldn't go. Ball tipped around. Austin Slagle's finally able to take it away here for the Lady Cats. J.C. Owsley with it now. Simmons defending. Owsley crossover, tries to get inside. Nice defense there by Simmons. Through the hands of Chloe Owsley. Robertson gets step away with them. 6.03 to go, Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Cats 42, Lady Warriors 26. Back after this. Ladies and gentlemen, are your diesel engines letting you down? Need a fix that's top-notch, fast, and reliable? DPS is your go-to destination. We are fueled by excellence and driven by expertise. From trucks to trailers, no job's too tough for our skilled crew. We've got the latest technology to get your diesel roaring again. Choose DPS where you decide and we provide. Stop in at 1051 North 10th Street in Worland. Call us 347-4410 or visit us on the web at dps307.com. Back here at Hot Springs County High School, 42-26 Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Lady Warriors have started to find their stride in this game. It's late, but still six minutes to go. Back within 16, operating well on the offensive side, causing chaos on the defensive side. Head coach Mark Mortimer called the timeout there after that made bucket. I think they might put on a full court press here. We'll have to see, though. Lady Warriors going to... Man up in the backcourt now. So first time Davdine King into the game here for the Lady Cats. She gets the ball here. Ball for Farrell now. Lady Warriors just trying to get the ball in quickly as Glam's trying to work on Farrell. Crossover now. Farrell in a little bit of trouble. Nice sweltering defense here from Glam's. Drop off for J.C. Owsley. She'll look to drive to the right. Hand off for Farrell. Lamb's going to come up top, just try to get the count on here against Farrell. Go backside, J.C. Owsley. Simmons right there with her. Swing through, now she'll come down the lane. Take on Mackenzie Ray and a foul there. Foul's going to go on Simmons, though, from behind, not on Ray. So J.C. Owsley to the free throw line. Five points on the night. First free throw up and good. Lady Cats 10 of 15 from the free throw line. Lady Warriors 10 of 18, so equal on the free throw point so far tonight. Maggie Landon out of the game. Hannah Hill back in for the Lady Cats. And second one is good. Back to an 18-point game, 44-26. Ball up ahead for Simmons. Just plenty of room to go to the hoop. Takes on Hill, missed the shot. King with a backside rebound here, then bounces it for Owsley. Now going to get it up for Farrell. Tried to take it away there, Lady Warriors, at midcourt. Aguile, though, now going to come out and try to create some pressure. Bumped her there, though, and Nyeli will pick up foul number two. Second of the quarter on the Lady Warriors. 5-11 to go as they hear it from the uh, Thermopolis student section. Dazzlin Hunt back into the game. 
Taslin Hunt moves off here to her right side, hand it for Owsley. Now for Hill, Farrell. Back for Hill, wide open, straight away three. That one's no good. Ball tipped around, swatted out there by Hunt and out of bounds. So Lady Warriors take back over with Yehida Aguayo coming into the game for Mackenzie Ray. Changes have come in. Uh, Austin Slagle back into the game as well for Thermopolis. Aguayo gets it in the front court. Clock now moving. A lot of traffic at the right elbow. Give it for Yehida Aguayo. Inside out, Simmons. Back for Yehida Aguayo to work here on Slagle. Couple of post moves. Turnaround shot up a little bit short there, though. And they tried to take it away from Farrell, but now she's running the floor looking for Owsley too strong and out of bounds. left in this one. Lady Warriors got to start to move quickly on the offensive side. It's a long way back, but got to start somewhere. Aguayo thought about pulling up. Now gives for Glanz, and she walked with it. I think she thought about going for the drive, but then decided to hold up and unfortunately move both feet. Maddie Robertson comes out of the game. Katya Navarro back in. Ball now for Dazlin Hunt. Going to try to use the pace here against Navarro. Ball almost tipped there by Simmons. But into the front court, the Lady Cats come. Farrell with it on a string now. Takes on Simmons, the left wing. Give it for J.C. Owsley. Bounce pass for Slagle and a foul in the middle. Yehida Aguayo with her fourth personal foul. Ball comes in now for J.C. Owsley. Hannah Hill down low for Farrell. Lost the handle. Her back up Hill. Owsley feels like she has an advantage as Hunt goes inside the paintball. Tipped around. Owsley somehow maintains possession. Goes down the baseline. Throwing it there. And now a foul going to come in here on Aguayo. And she's going to foul out. Yehida's fifth there. Rare stat line for her, only two points in it. Mackenzie Ray into the game. Play looking to come in now, get it for Farrell. Dribbles out to the left wing, now all the way around the top of the key. Give it for J.C. Owsley. Navarro trying to defend here. Owsley got to the left side of the Lane there, missed it, and then Navarro had the uh, rebound here as Navarro gets it back up for Nayeli Aguayo. Aguayo straight downhill, looking inside out. Glanz is open for a three. That one's a little bit off, no good. Slagle fell to the deck. They're going to call a foul here. Not really sure where the foul came in. They're going to call it on Nayeli Aguayo. It was kind of a innocent coming together there, and that's the fifth foul. So we got free throws the last 324 now for the Lady Cats. So Slagle will go to the line where she's two of four. Lady counts 69% from the free throw line tonight as Slagle knocks in the first. On the season, a 46% free throw shooting team, so well above their average into the 70s. 45-26 as they're on the uh, precipice of taking that number three seed into the West Regional. As they knock that one in as well, Slagle now with 10 points in the game, and it's a 20-point contest again. 3.24 to go here, Navarro, Nayeli Aguayo, Maddie Glanz, and Mackenzie Ray, and Taylor Simmons out there for head coach Mark Mortimer. And then trying to throw it to the elbow, Navarro, Glanz wasn't even looking for it. Hunt gives it for Farrell, rushes up the right side here, now picks up the dribble, needs some help. Find it and hunt. Now Owsley will dribble out of trouble here. Wow, trying to make it difficult. Owsley all the way to the bucket and a reach around from behind. As Owsley will go to the uh, free throw line. Guayo uh, picked up the foul there from behind. Nayeli's fourth. 
Send Owsley back to the line. She's got seven so far in the game. Three double-digit scores for the Lady Cats. Owsley can't hit the first. 12 for Farrell, 12 for Hannah Hill, and 10 for Austin Slegel. Maddie Robertson comes in here for a couple of plays for Nyalia Guayo. Guayo maybe didn't need to try to go for that block. Mackenzie Ray was waiting for Owsley down low as Owsley rattles it home. 47-26. Navarro, Robertson, Glanz, Ray, and Simmons out there. Maddie Glanz, Katya Navarro. Now give it for Maddie Glanz up top. Now Katya Navarro open for three, right wing up, and it's good, Katya Navarro. Navarro having her best game of the season, nine points so far as Farrell trying to get the ball in, finally does for Owlsley and a timeout taken by head coach Steven Weinberger and the Lady Cats, 47-29. Lady Warriors trail it, 2.29 to go in the fourth quarter. Back next on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. In its 24 years in Warland, King's Carpet One has become a trusted destination for homeowners and a valued member of the community. Discover our exciting new showroom, Room by Room, designed to elevate your shopping experience. A family-owned business that's also a good neighbor, King's Carpet One supports many charities in Warland and throughout the Bighorn Basin. King's Carpet One, giving our best to our customers. Wouldn't go, and then the tough ones that almost go went for the Lady Cats, wouldn't go for the Lady Warriors. Ball in for Owlsley. She'll look to defend, trying to go up for Hunt. Too strong there, out of bounds. So nice job by the Lady Warriors to force a turnover there. So out of the timeout, Lady Cats turn it over. Maddie Glanz in control of the offense, goes right side. Simmons tried to go back door cut. Now give it for Glanz through her hands momentarily. Splits a couple of defenders to the hoop. Bank shot, no. Fight for it. Simmons comes away with it. Taylor for Maddie Glanz. Drives inside past one. Foul there. Going to go against Maggie Landon. Second foul of the quarter on the Lady Cats. So a baseline inbounds play from the right baseline for the Lady Warriors. Nice ball in for Maddie Robertson, and that one again tips around. No good. Robertson, though, with the rebound. Navarro back for Robertson. She'll dribble across the top of the key. Give it for Taylor Simmons. Open now. Taylor sets, fires from straight away. That one off. No good. Mackenzie Ray threw a couple of defenders up. No good, but heading to the free throw line. Nice set there from the Lady Warriors. Foul is going to go on Dazlin Hunt, her third. Ray, one point in the game thus far from the free throw line where she's one of two. Lady Warriors, 10 of 18. First one crawls over and good. 47-30. Couple of changes as Cameron Farrell comes back in. Looked like Hannah Hill came back in as well. Slagle down low. Ray, one more free throw on the way here, and that one's short, no good. Slagle has it tipped at her hands, finally ends up in the hands of Hannah Hunt. J.C. Owsley going to throw it up now for Slagle. Needs some help. Give it back for Owsley. Smart there to have her come into the front court first before getting rid of it. Robertson defending on Owsley. Going to hand it off now for Hunt. Now Farrell. Katya Navarro, the defender, sticking on her very tightly. Hand off for Hunt. She'll dribble here to the right wing. Nice little backdoor cut there from Hill up and good. Like the movement there from the Lady Cats. Expose the Lady Warrior high pressure. They had no other choice but to do it. Ball up ahead for Simmons. Tried to go in now for Ray. She stepped out of bounds. Before trying to go downhill. Almost lost her footing there, but Hannah Hill has it now. Glanz will come up and hassle. And try to throw it out of bounds. Nice job by Glance. Throw it up here for Maddie Robertson. Slagle trying to make up the distance. Get it inside. Cut to Navarro into double digits there. Nice transition offense there by the Lady Warriors. Ball for Farrell. Simmons trying to make it tough here. Owsley backsides taken away by Aguayo. Down low. Back for Navarro again. Cut to Navarro having a career night at the varsity level here. 49-34, 15-point game. Timeout on the floor. 23.4 to go. Back next on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. The Warriors Supporter Shield. Join the War Party. Thank you to the following War Party members. Jay's Detail, 1626 U.S. Highway 20, 347-2071. Bryant Honey, Pure Wyoming Honey and Pollination Services. 
Sage Creek Land and Cattle Company, Bighorn Federal Savings Bank, 1006 Bighorn Avenue, 347-6196. Want to join the war party? Call 307-431-1468 or email mckamiebroadcasting at gmail.com. I think it's a full time out on the floor. Again, if you're just joining us, 49-34 in favor of the Thermopolis Lady Bobcats. The score's lopsided, but the effort has been equal. The Lady Warriors have really played hard tonight. I mean, you're looking at, uh, you know, player of the game. you got to go with Katya Navarro. I mean, she's got 13 points in this one, and 11 of them have come in the second half. If there's been a de deflection, it's been, been her often. For, forcing some steals, some turnovers. It's been a good night for Katya Navarro. Ball comes in for J.C. Owsley. Back now for Farrell in the backcourt. Double team. Now it's taken away again by Navarro. Back for Simmons. Ball's loose. Trying to get it for Navarro. Does. Up. Plus the foul. Katya Navarro. As her teammates celebrate alongside her. That gives her nine points in the quarter. Lead down to 13. 13.3 13 left. May end up not being enough for the Lady Warriors here this late on, but man, they really have fought back here in this second half. Really have fought hard throughout, and Navarro completes a three-point play. Ball's looking to come in now, and five-second call. No, they're going to call a timeout first by head coach Weinberger. 49-37, to 37. all they have left is fulls. I don't know if they'll actually uh, take a no, 30-second timeout, so we... Spend it here with you. Chance to thank our sponsors, Stellar Roofing and Construction, McGarvin and Taylor Real Estate, Hasco Industrial Supply, Sage Creek Land and Cattle, Jay's Detail, Admiral Beverage, King's Carpet One, Sally's Classic Pizza, Bryant Honey, Bighorn Federal Savings Bank, Diesel Pickup Specialist, Swing Trucking, and McGarvin and Moberly Construction, our fine local sponsors, making this broadcast possible. Uh, again, they support us. Please support them. That gets our support on for our Warriors and Lady Warriors. We appreciate all our uh, folks watching as well. If you haven't, subscribe to our YouTube page at McKamey Broadcasting as well as our Facebook page. Farrell going to get the ball in now for Owsley. Ball comes back. Navarro nearly took it away. Ball's loose. Glanz has it. Kick it up top now for Simmons. Five seconds to go. Aguayo for Navarro. Why not at the buzzer? Katya Navarro. She hit it. My goodness. It ended up being a nine-point game and most of the time, you wouldn't hear that kind of celebration at the end of it, but Katya Navarro, 19 points in the game for Katya in a nine-point loss, 49-40. to 40. I'll tell you, a nine-point game in a contest where the Lady Warriors could not get a bucket to go. They couldn't buy a basket in the first half. That is a heck of a fight back. I know it's in a loss. I know the Lady Warriors are now the four seed in the West Regional, but, man, they'll have something to hang their hats on late here in this contest, final score, 49-40. Thermopolis takes out the Lady Warriors. Quick scoring summary here. For the Lady Cats, Chloe Owsley with two, 12 for Cameron Farrell, eight for J.C. Owsley, two for Anna King, 14 for Hannah Hill, one for Morgan Jones, and 10 for Austin Slagle. For the Lady Warriors, four points for Maddie Robertson, one for Madeline Glanz, 11 for Nyali Aguayo, one for Taylor Simmons, two for Yahida Aguayo, Two for Mackenzie Ray and 19 of the Lady Warrior 40 coming from Katya Navarro. Two triples in the game, three of seven from the free throw line and plenty of action from the field for the Lady Warriors. Some positivity at the end of that one, of course. Going to be tough to swallow the loss, but good effort to end it. Lady Warriors score 19 points in the fourth quarter, 30 of their 40 in half number two, outscoring Lady Cats 30 to 19. If most nights you can do that, you're going to feel good about your position in any game if you are the Lady Warriors. That does it for our Lady Warrior coverage. Come back on the other side for a shortened version of the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Asco Industrial Supply is known for their industrial hoses, steel products, and trailers. And welcome back inside of Hot Springs County High School. Jordan McKamey with you. Here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network, Lady Warriors falling 49-40, to 40, but the uh, Warrior boys coming up now here. Lady Warriors, good fight to end that one. They'll be uh, frustrated they couldn't get things going earlier, but again, a career night from uh, Katya Navarro. A big uh, congratulations to her. She's been picking up extra minutes. She's been playing really good basketball, and to be rewarded with a performance like that, especially to close it out in that fourth quarter for the Lady Warriors. I think she had 
13 of their 19 in that quarter. It was pretty incredible there for Katia Navarro. But the Warriors and Bobcats now going to match it up here. Let's go inside this matchup real quickly here for the uh, two boys teams here. Looking at the standings, Thermopolis comes in at 9-8 and eight overall, 0-4 in the 3A Northwest. The Warriors at 9-10, and 2-3 and three overall in the 3A Northwest. These two teams uh, looking at some of the uh, scoring Throughout the season from a team scoring perspective, Worland at number eight, averaging 51 and a half per game. Uh, Thermopolis averaging 53.9, almost 54 points per game. So those teams sitting at number six and number eight. In terms of team shooting, Worland shooting 39%, 39.3% from the field. Uh, Thermopolis shooting 39.8. So very similar there, very similar match. It's giving up 48.4 per game. Warriors giving up 52.2, so a little bit of a slight advantage there for the Bobcats. And again, the energy is going to be up in this one. Two teams again coming in overall at uh, 9 and 10 for the Warriors, 9 and 8 for the Cats. Cats winless in the 3A Northwest. Warriors with a couple of wins, one against the Cats earlier this season and one last weekend on a Brian Caballero buzzer beater against the Lovell Bulldogs. So, again, Warriors with a win here would for sure lock up the uh, three seed, and I think there's maybe a long shot with some odds going on for that uh, for that fourth spot, but uh, it would be an odd one uh, for the or the second spot for the Warriors to get that two seed. So uh, fighting for the number three seed guaranteed and then hoping for some uh, – math and some results to fall their way to try to get up to that number two seed in the West Regional. Going to take another quick break. On the other side, we'll get into our keys to the game. Of course, Northern Wyoming News starting lineups and opening tip-off coming up here a little more than five minutes ago. Till boys varsity action on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. This is the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show. Trucking is a family-owned and operated company in Worland, Wyoming, offering trucking services for a host of industries. They have done extensive work in Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, and Colorado, as well as surrounding Rocky Mountain states for the past 70 years. Their modern and up-to-date equipment allows them to provide full-service solutions for their customers' needs, from start to completion. Swing Trucking, 347-4161. Swing Trucking is a proud supporter of McKamey Broadcasting and Worland High School Athletics. And welcome back inside the McGarvin and Taylor pregame show. Jordan McKamey with you. Let's head into our keys of the game for tonight. Uh, maybe a handful of them instead of just three. But uh, be up for the challenge. Head coach Aaron Abel talked about don't drink the poison. This is a game that the Thermopolis Bobcats circled on their calendar to start the year. Every time at home, they want to take it to the Warriors. They want to put up a performance. They want their student section into this one. Warriors have to be up to the challenge and counter that narrative early on. The uh, Bobcats with... Armani Dukes, Brody Potter, uh, Jet Longwell as well can uh, drive to the bucket. Zach Hasty, so gotta gotta be ready for those straight line drives and to counter them. Uh, head coach Aaron Abel mentioned uh, the one don't uh, don't drink that poison. No, we mentioned it, but that one's definitely big for the Warriors because, as he said, A beats B, B beats you know A beats B. So that doesn't mean that you know, A is going to beat C or whatever way you work up that combination, as head coach Aaron will said, just because they beat Lovell and competed with the Powell Panthers last weekend at home, that does not mean this is a gimme. That doesn't mean that you just get to show up tonight and the scoreboard's all of a sudden going to come 307-347-4271. Talk to any one of their talented agents there at McGarvin and Taylor, and they'll help you out with any of your real estate needs. With the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter. That's where the West begins. We're the bank that's with you wherever that spirit leads. Because we're more than a bank in Wyoming, we're Wyoming in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. 
McGarvin Moberly Construction, a Worland institution, is celebrating 60 years in business. McGarvin Moberly is a specialized construction company with a focus on highway rehabilitation, maintenance, and reconstruction. For as many years as they've been in business, they've supported Worland High School Athletics, and that tradition continues with the support of McCamey Broadcasting. McGarvin Moberly wishes good luck and success to all Worland Warrior and Lady Warrior teams this season. McGarvin Moberly, 60 years and counting. Go Warriors! Sally's Classic Pizza in Worland, the classiest pizza around. Sally's offers pizza made with fresh dough daily. Go with a classic single topping or load it up with the king. Ten toppings in all. Friday, football and pizza is a winning combination. The Warrior Special is available all school year. Get a large two-topping pizza and a two- And we're back live here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Sorry we had our... Uh, Internet dip out on us there momentarily, so it looks like we are back online. So thanks for joining us here on the McCamey Broadcasting Network. If you're on YouTube, which of course you are if you're watching this one, make sure you subscribe. If you're signed into YouTube, subscribe to us, like the video, get our exposure out there. Follow us on Facebook at McCamey Broadcasting as well. That helps get our message out, helps us share it. People have asked, what can I do to help out if it's not monetarily? And again, it's not all about the dollars. This is about the kids on the floor and the businesses that support us. Share that link. Anytime you see it on Facebook, share it. Share it to your friends. Send it via text message. Whatever you want to do, you can't share that thing enough. Make sure that we get all the uh, all of the uh, exposure to these warriors and lady warriors that we can. Let's get into our Northern Wyoming News starting lineups. We'll start with the Thermopolis Bobcats. They'll go with number zero, Jet Longwell. Then number 11 is Dell Dukes. Number 12, Armani Dukes. Number 22, Zach Hasty, And number 23 is Brody Potter. Longwell, Dukes, Dukes, Hasty, and Potter for the Cats there in their home whites. Purple numbers. And number 34 is Chase Harris. So again, I think it's uh, Teal, Swalsetter, Kidgel, Page, Caballero, and Harris. It is Tyler Kidgel, and actually Tyshawn Swalstead is out there as well. So the change is actually uh, with Brian Caballero being out for this one of the starting five. So the uh, PA man introducing the uh, rest of the uh, Bobcats here. So again, remind you, it's. Uh, Teal, Kidgel, Page, Swalstead, and Harris out there. Harris going to be in the middle of the match. He's going to tip it up against Brody Potter as the lights flicker back on here. Northern Wyoming News, weekly publications on Thursday, online subscriptions, yodaily.com there, the uh, website for the Northern Wyoming News. Now it's time for our Northern Wyoming News opening tip-off here as there's eight minutes up on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Players ready, officials ready, and we are underway here in 3A Northwest Conference play. Tipped into the front court there by Potter. Harris rose a little early that time around, so we are underway at Hot Springs County High School. Ball outside, Dukes to Dukes. This one's Del Dukes back for Armani. Left side, drives down the left baseline, ran into trouble all the way to the other side. Three-pointer on the way for Hasty. That one's no good. Potter had the inside position. He's too strong there. Nice job by Teal to get the rebound that time for the Warriors. Owen Page now top of the key with it. Hassled up top by Longwell. Kick it out for Teal. Brody to the free throw line. Outside Swalstead starts the drive. Kick it for Page. He'll work inside out. Back for Swalstead, inside for Harris, a big push there, but nothing whistled that time. Harris moved from about the middle of the paint all the way down to the baseline there, but didn't get the benefit of the whistle down low, so maybe we can expect a physical one here. Ball comes in for Armani Dukes. Now back for Hasty. Dukes again, almost lost it, and now a reach, now a touch foul called by the same referee that missed the uh, pretty serious bump there, but uh, Swalstead's gonna get picked up for the foul there. A little too aggressive on the reach in. Monty Dukes with it now, and now back for Hasty. Dukes hassled here right around the perimeter. Skip it all the way back. No, it's short there, tipped away by the Warriors, and it's a turnover for Thermopolis. Quickly the other way we go with Owen Page looking to back it down, forced it back up. Cats here. Foul goes on Potter. I think he was smartly trying to hold up that uh, that run out there because Harris was out in front of the crowd that time around. 
Page going to give it off for Swalstead as he'll start the offense. Harris asking for it inside. It's back for Teal. He'll drive to the right elbow, try to get inside. Swalstead open for three, but passed it up. Now Page, shot fake. Inside out for Kidgel. Now back for Page, left wing, trying to go in for Harris, and that's two quick ones there against Potter. And that's trouble for head coach Shane Corpening. Harris had the position that time and got the uh, got the call. So we'll see Cody Bomingen. So Bomingen checks in along with number two Canyon Gerber. Del Dukes, Brody Potter out. See how long Potter is going to spend on the bench there with those two fouls. So Alstead to inbounds here, going to get it in for Owen Page, left corner pocket three. He buried it. That's a way to start it there, Owen Page. He has found his range from the outside. Ball comes in for Armani Dukes against the pressure. Skip it across now for Gerber. Down low it goes for Bomingen, and transition foul there going to go against Brody Teal. That'll send Bomingen to the free throw line. Here's it from the uh, student section there. Hopefully you're picking that up on our uh, crowd mic. It's a good energy here inside of Hot Springs County High School. The Cats trying to get on the board. They won't there on that first free throw. Here comes Brian Caballero off the bench for Tyshawn Swalstead. Now has this possession in control. Give it for Kidgel. Now Teal. Harris posting. Page down the lane. Ran out of room. Now kicks it out for Teal. He goes to the baseline, ran out of room. Page shot fake there. Longwell, though, stays down. Kidgel for Harris. He'll work inside, almost lost his footing. Turn around. Harris, little soft touch there. Harris, a little turnaround there. It was good defense by the Cats, but uh, better offense by Harris there. Didn't try to get into his man, just fell away. Knew he had the size advantage, able to get that push shot over the top. Outside the ball goes for Hasty. Hasty down the lane, taking on Caballero. Bank shot around, no good. And Owen Page has the rebound for the Warriors. Quickly up the right side, give for Teal. Downhill he goes. Now he'll put up a little high floater, and Teal's got it here. And the Warriors out to an early 7 0 advantage. Head coach Corpening looks on here at the 5 0 5 mark on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Doesn't take a timeout. Gerber going to the free throw line. Now get it down low for Longwell. Dukes leans in the shoulder. Good defense straight up by Page. Ball tipped around into the hands of Longwell. Turnaround shot won't go. Cats can't lift the lid here in the early go, and they got some good shots there, but the Warriors come away with that next rebound. Kidgel back for Teal, the length of the court, and Dukes going to be tagged for foul number two, and that's a little bit of trouble for the Cats early on. Both Potter and Dukes, and now a technical foul to start. I believe these are his... uh, Foul free throws coming up here. So Teal at the free throw line. First one out in front. Good position there. Makes it three in a row and chance for four of them. Plus the Warriors will retain possession. So a bit of a uh, tough start there for the uh, Cats, but it's going to be Warrior basketball here on the sideline. So it's going to stay Warrior basketball with an 11-point lead here, 11-0 run. Here with 4.42 to go in the quarter. Swalstead, Caballero, Page, Teal, and Harris out there. Harris going to be working against Bomingen down low. Gets it now outside the uh, elbow and tried to go in for Teal. A little bit too high and out of bounds there. Warriors second turnover. So got four free throws. Couldn't get the uh, six-point possession, but uh, four-point possession there. Del Dukes going downhill. Shut off by Page. Now a drive by Bomingen. Good defense there by the Warriors. Corralling the driver. Hasty wants to go against Caballero. Tipped out of bounds. Oh, it says inbounds here for Del Dukes. Get it underneath for Longwell. Swalstead has it. Now it's up for Harris. Quick transition here. Harris going to go all the way to the hoop block there. Teal has it, though, on the block. Outside for three. Corner pocket rolls around. No good. Harris, second chance, third chance. There's Page. He puts it up and good. And the Warriors are running. It's a sweet start. Baker's doesn't lead. Warriors by 13. Timeout on the floor. Back next on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. I was a little bit smaller, a mini shack baller. I wouldn't have to yell when I talk to a toddler. I wish I had more leg room on a plane or a train. Life is tough when you're taller. Yeah, I shop it big and tall. But when it comes to my Pepsi, I like to keep it nice and small. A soft drink for your pocket. 
so light and refreshing, one sip, don't knock it. So the next time you have to check out line, grab some Pepsi minis, but get your own. Because these are all mine, mine, mine. Stellar Roofing and Construction in Worland offers Roof Adop In at 1115 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. Warriors out to a dream start here. Going to try to keep it going. 356 to go in the first quarter. 13-0 Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. As uh, Cats will come into the front court. Six for Teal. Five for Page and two for Harris so far. Longwell drives to the bucket up around and finally goes down for the Cats on the drive there. I was going to say if that one spit out, I was going to have to uh, do a Sir Isaac Newton call there about some poor gravity. Page left his feet. Find it for Caballero. Warriors kind of settle down now. Got going a little quick there. Settle into the offense. Teal for Caballero. Back for Teal. Swalstead. Little zone look here from the Cats. Give it back for Swalstead. Trying to deny that pass onto the free throw line. Finally got there for Page. Inside out for Teal. Back for Caballero. No, cross court for Swalstead. Fires this one on the way. That too strong. Del Dukes with the rebound there, so Warriors empty that trip. Did work up a good shot there as they kick it outside for Longwell. Crosses over to the free throw line, trying to back down against Harris. Get it out now for Gerber. Gerber wants to drive on Swalstead outside. Del Dukes for three. That one's short. Long rebound chance here as the ball is saved, not saved inbounds. It looked like Dukes might have been on the free throw line. Great hustle over there. Harris going to come out of the game. Decker in, so Mason Decker in. Zach Hasty comes out. First time we see Andrew Howell. Caballero for Teal. They'll work the perimeter here. Back to the right side. Give for Owen Page. He'll go to work. Turnaround shot partially blocked, they say there. And the Warriors again empty that time around. Howell coming forward. Has to get it back now for Gerber. Swalstead forcing him one way. A little behind the back dribble there by Gerber. Puts up an awkward one through the lane. Nothing there. Page has the rebound, and Swalstead runs the court. He'll go to the right side. Find Caballero. Rises for three. Right corner. It's good. Brian Caballero for a triple. 16-2. Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Caballero picks up right where he left off. Dukes getting a screen here. Back up top for Longwell. Now Gerber. Backs up, step back three, he's got an answer. Canyon Gerber, the Cats needed that one as he hit the step back triple. Caballero now for Teal. Skip it across here for Swalstead. Trying to go in for Page, back for Decker. Get it up top, Caballero. Working around now for Teal, in for Page. Up, no good. Owen just couldn't find his range inside. Now we'll get tagged for a reach in foul. Just the uh, third team foul on the Warriors. Minute 25 to go. Pinnacle Bank scoreboard here. Quarter number one. 16 to 5 advantage for the Warriors. Got out to an 11 0 run to start this one. Dukes trying to get over the top of a screen. Pushes up a little floater there, and Del Dukes has a bucket. Cats have now found their feet here. Buckets on back to back possessions. Caballero. For Swalstead, give for Page, back for Caballero. Quick catch, quick three. That one's no good. Long rebound chance saved in here for Page. Ooh, fortunate there actually for the Cats is a great hustle by Howell, but that one went right to Page. Would have been an easy two. So Warriors going to set up the uh, inbounds. Ball comes in now, 16 to 7, your score. Ball outside now for Teal. Back for Swalstead, working around the perimeter of the right side. Teal went to skip it. It's jumped there that time by Bomagen. Caballero's back there, takes a hit. They're going to call a blocking foul. My goodness, Caballero did his best to get back. I thought he got there, but they say he was a moment late. So that'll send Bomagen to the line for an and one opportunity. Man, Caballero sprinted back and did as best as he could to get into position. I thought he got himself straight up and took the hit when uh, Bomagen leaned in, but back to a seven-point game, chance to make it a six-point game here on a little mini run back by the Cats. Three straight possessions, points. That free throw's no good as Mason Decker's got the rebound. Get it up for Teal. 
And a reach-in foul here by Ellis Weber, and that'll send Teal to the line shooting free throws. Teal was a player that uh, got fouled, went to the line, and shot the technical free throws earlier. 16 to 9. Rattles in and out, no good. It looked like good form that time, but just caught the uh, back of the rim and rattled in and out, no good. 35 seconds left in the quarter. Teal, one of two on the trip and five of six from the line. Now a foul comes in on the Cats. It's going to remain Warrior basketball. So Jet Longwell picks it up. So an extra free throw coming here for the Warriors. From actually extra two here for Decker off the right side. No good. Just caught the front of the tin. No good. One more here for Decker. Junior fires and hits. 18-9, 18-9, to nine, double up lead here for the Warriors. They go back on defense. Howl up the outside. Moves to the middle of the floor. Get it for Weber. Weber at the free throw line. Ran out of room now. Going to go for Longwell. Able to track that down. 21 seconds to go in the quarter. Deep three for Howell. In and out. No. Fight for the rebound. It's Page that comes up with it. Now Teal the other way. Holds things up. Nice little jump stop and in. Brody Teal, great body control there as Bomingen had got back, but he didn't hit him. Great play there. Transition triple, no good there for the Cats at the buzzer. Caballero with the rebound. One quarter in the books. Portland Warriors 20. Thermopolis Bobcats 9 on the Pinnacle Bank score. We're back next with more Warrior basketball on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Ladies and gentlemen, are your diesel engines letting you down? Need a fix that's top-notch, fast, and reliable? DPS is your go-to destination. We are fueled by excellence and driven by expertise. From trucks to trailers, no job's too tough for our skilled crew. We've got the latest technology to get your diesel roaring again. Choose DPS where you decide and we provide. Stop in at 1051 North 10th Street in Worland. Call us 347-4410 or visit us on the web at dps307.com. In its 24 years in Worland, King's Carpet One has become a trusted destination for homeowners and a valued member of the community. Discover our exciting new showroom, Room by Room, designed to elevate your shopping experience. A family-owned business that's also a good neighbor, King's Carpet One supports many charities in Worland and throughout the Bighorn Basin. King's Carpet One, giving our best to our customers and our community. 29 after one quarter, it'll be Warrior basketball to start the second quarter. Underway, Swalstead back for Teal. One dribble outside Caballero. Swalstead trying to go in for Harris. It's taken away there by Bomingen. Swalstead tried to sneak it over the top, but could not. Straight downhill coming Gerber. Howell outside. Now for Weber, nearly lost it. Now spins away from trouble. Howell for Gerber, going to work on Harris, try to go to the outside, driving down the lane was Weber, got it back out in front for Gerber, really good ball movement there. That time as head coach Aaron Abel wants a 30-second timeout quickly into the second quarter, 20-11, Warriors lead it back in 30 on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. The Warriors Supporter Shield, join the war party. Thank you to the following war... So we're back here at Thermopolis High School. Keep having our internet drop out from time to time, so we apologize about that, kind of outside of our control, but appreciate you dealing with the buffering. So Warriors come out of the timeout here with Swalstead, facing a little trap pressure, get it across for Owen Page. One dribble there, bounce pass back for Swalstead. Now he'll dribble towards Page. Page in the corner for Caballero, and he stepped on the sideline out of bounds. Not sure what the Warriors were going for that time. Head coach Aaron Abel talking to the bench here as Armani Duke's going to come back into the game. Again, nine-point game here now, 20-11. Cats' first points of the quarter, and mention 
just like it was against Powell. Nobody's going away anytime here in the 3A. Base with a strong rebound inside. Warriors will run the floor here now to the right side. Give it for Page. Goes down the lane, ran out of room, finds it in the corner for Swalstead. Drives inside, back for Caballero. Now the Warriors will settle into the offense. Kidgel, give it for Caballero. Back for Kidgel. So the Cats settle back into the paint here, looking like maybe a little 2-3 jump out zone. Harris wants it. Didn't get it there, though. Page, Warriors patient here. Back for Owen Page. He'll dribble the left elbow. Almost lost it there. He'll work against Dukes. Leans in. Puts up the shot. Too strong. Harris had it tipped out of his hands and out of bounds. Good position by Chase Harris. Page just couldn't hit it on the inside. Page with five points so far in the game. Teal the leading score for the Warriors with nine. Swalstead with an inbounds play here. Ball going to come in for Harris. Now Kidgel. Work it around the perimeter. Harris wants it, has it now, double team coming. Turnaround shot is up and good. Harris there made a decisive move down low and finishes off glass. 22 to 11, Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Outside Del Dukes looking for a screen. Got it from Armani. Hasty spot up three right side, rolls around, no good. And Page is able to save. No, we couldn't say that. He didn't find a hit the deck beforehand. Went right through his hands there as Page a little bit frustrated. As couldn't corral that rebound as he was coming to bring it in, rolled off his chest. And the Cats will get a reset opportunity here with 5-11 to play here in the quarter. Ball comes in for Dukes. Got it in there quickly. Warriors had Dukes slip inside the uh, defensive pressure there and get an easy two. As Page has it stripped away, a lot of contact there as Dukes coming the other way. Get it for Hasty Kidgel. Hasty to the hoop, up off glass and good and two Quick buckets here for the uh, Cats. Travel, it's just a collection. Owen Page is a long player. Now standing about six foot three, six foot four. It's just a uh, collection dribble and landed on the deck. It always looks awkward when somebody makes a really athletic play at the high school level. Don't think it was a travel, but whistle doesn't go the way of the Warriors. Their third turnover unof- or fourth turnover unofficially. Dukes, Armani Dukes for three. That one's too strong over the standard. And that'll be Warrior basketball. 4 and 18 to go. The Cats trying to chip back into this lead, a 6 2 quarter in favor of Thermopolis. Page, Kitchell, Caballero, Swalstead, and Harris out there. Page has it up top for Caballero. Ball's still loose, taken back by the Cats. Just not sure if Page saw the defender on Caballero there, so reset it back in the front court. And Caballero nearly took that away on a gamble for a steal, but he'll commit his first foul. Fisher Martinez comes in for Caballero. On the other side, Howell into the game along with Weber as Gerber and Hasty get a break. Ball comes in for Weber. Give for Howell. It's a screen there, pulls up deep, two point jumper, got it. So Howell with the deuce there, back to a seven point game, 24 to 17. Kidgel up ahead. It's an outside for Martinez. Handoff for Swalstead. The ball's taken away here by Martinez. Good pace back by Dukes, is able to bring it under control. Ball tipped around, taken away now here by Dell Dukes, going the other way. Swalstead stripped it away there, tried to save it in. What a good play by Tyshawn Swalstead, denies an easy. Layup there to Dukes. Great hustle play as we'll see Potter check back into the game for the first time. Timeout, though, first for head coach Corpening and the Cats here. Timeout on the floor. 30-second timeout. We stick with you here. So the Warriors got out to an 11-0 start. Led after the first quarter, 29. It's been an 8-4 quarter in favor of the Bobcats here. Leading scores in the game, Brody Teal with nine for the Warriors. On the other side, five points for Canyon Gerber. Then a smattering of twos the rest of the way. The Warriors, Harris with six, Page with five, Caballero with three. 2.38 to go here in this uh, first half of basketball. In the Warriors. About to come out of the timeout huddle. And Will quickly. Head coach Aaron Abel still on the floor. Quickly going to have to break here as 
Abel nearly lost it, but gets it in the right corner. Ball up top, Swalstead. It's a little bit awkward here, and the Warriors throw it out of bounds. Warrior, a little bit of chaos stayed with the Warriors there as they just couldn't settle it down into the offense, trying to move the ball around quickly and try to get it in for Harris, but the bounce pass spun away out of bounds. So Cats force the turnover, coming ahead, trying to make it a uh, two-possession game here this trip down. Del Dukes going to get a screen. Well, backdoor cut for Howell, and he's going to be fouled there by Harris. Got his money's worth that time as Howell got a hard hit there as Harris and Page help him up off the deck. So Harris picks up his first personal, and that sends Howell to the free throw line. First one up, first one good for Howell. Kidgel comes back into the game. Howell hadn't attempted a free throw until this game, so he's 100% now. Into his man, probably would have been a foul, but tried to get through him and never put the ball on the deck. The Warriors have been turning it over pretty regularly here in the second quarter. I think they have five turnovers in the quarter. Uh, Brody Potter going to come back into the game for the Cats as well. Jet Longwell wanting the ball down low, didn't get it there. Potter up top. Outside for Howell. Howell take on the three, already hit one. That one's short of everything as Bomingen saves it in. Potter with it now, going to try to work on Harris. The defense here by Chase. Bomingen, patience of the minute 18 to go here in the half. Howell in for Corbin Butte. Warriors trying to find... So Armani Dukes back in, Warriors out there. Chase Harris to the line, 46% free throw shooter, but knocked down the first. Brody Teal will come in after the break. Harris, second free throw, rattles home good. Two a two trip there for Chase. He's got eight points in the game. It's an eight point game, 26 to 18, Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Warriors go into the full court press here. Ball gonna come in now for the Cats. Howell is a 38% free throw shooter, so pretty efficient from the outside. Hasn't taken a bunch. He's seven seconds to go. Now six. Going to be five. Page going all the way to the hoop. Partially blocked there. Howell gets the rebound, and we're at the half. After a 20-9 quarter, the Cats respond with a 14-6 answer, and we're a three-point contest. 26-23 at the halftime mark on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Come back on the other side for scoring summary. Look at that opening half. A talk with head coach Mark Mortimer and more on the Halftime Show coming your way next on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Asco Industrial Supply is known for their industrial hoses, steel products, and trailers, but they'll surprise you with products for every customer. Check out Lazy One Clothing, matching pajamas, and more. Kill Tech Jackets for kids and adults, ready to protect you from old man winter. Stay cozy and stylish with Trail Crest Blankets. Stuck? Not a chance with Yankum Kinetic Ropes for every size ride. Give Hasco Industrial Supply a call at 347-6158 or stop in at 415 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. Wing Trucking is a family-owned and operated company in Worland, Wyoming, offering trucking services for a host of industries. They have done extensive work in Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, and Colorado, as well as surrounding Rocky Mountain states for the past 70 years. Their modern and up-to-date equipment allows them to provide full-service solutions for their customers' needs, from start to completion. Swing Trucking, 347-4161. Swing Trucking is a proud supporter of McKamey Broadcasting and Worland High School Athletics. Here in Wyoming, we live by the spirit of the Wild West. Now where the sun's a little brighter, where the snows that fall are a trifle wider, where the bonds of home are a wee bit tighter, that's where the West begins. 
We're the bank that's with you wherever that spirit leads. Because we're more than a bank in Wyoming, we're Wyoming in a bank. Pinnacle Bank, the way banking should be. Great game thus far here. Halftime score, 26-23 in favor of the Warriors. Warriors led by as many as 11 in that opening half, but a great close there by the Cats. Got them back within three. Warriors held to just six points in the second quarter. All of them belong to Chase Harris after a 20-point explosion in the opening quarter of basketball. Let's go into a scoring summary here for the Cats. Jet Longwell, four. Kenyon Gerber, five. Two for Cody Bomingen, two for Dell Dukes and Armani Dukes, and two for Zach Hasty. The other six going to Andrew Howell. And looking at Howell again on the season, averaging about three points per game, up to six already. So uh, three down for him, two threes down for the uh, Cats, and two down for the Warriors. Scoring for the Warriors, nine points for Brody Teal. One for Mason Decker, five for Owen Page. Three for Brian Caballero, and eight for Chase Harris in that opening half for the Warriors. So that gives them their 26. Again, both these squads looking for that number three seed. The Warriors came out with that pressure thinking, hey, maybe we can get out here and you know really make the Cats earn it, and they did. But the Cats had the answer in the second quarter. I mean, when you go off to an early run, the other team knows there's a lot of time left. Warriors couldn't quite get the offense going the same way. Cats came out with a little different kind of a jump out 2-3 zone and were really loading up down low. Warriors couldn't hit some of the open shots that they got, and they've had a few bounce off that usually go down for the likes of uh, Owen Page and others. So that kind of factors into it seems to be kind of the story tonight for the uh, – was the story for the Lady Warriors, but uh, hoping not to be the story for the uh, Warrior Boys team. Here as they lead it by three, competitive 16 minutes still awaiting us. Halftime, they have a, it's called a chuck a duck contest. So buy these little ducks and you can throw it at halftime towards a uh, little uh, water barrel out there. Uh, AD, Brandon, Dare Me, nobody made it this time around, but a chance to win half the pot, kind of a fun little contest uh, there. Then, of course, appreciate the crew for uh, cleaning up there and getting all the ducks off the floor there in between. So the Warriors and Cats just about six and a half minutes from getting going in half number two. On the other side, we hope to have a conversation with head coach Mark Mortimer. He's down talking with uh, Big One Radio Network's uh, Ben Hoffman right now, so hopefully we're going to get a chance to talk to the coach. Really want to talk to him about his team's effort, especially late on uh, in their game. Ended up losing 49-40, to but it was a heck of a finish by the girls, especially Katya Navarro. I want to talk to the coach about that. So we hope to have him back on the other side here on the Halftime Show. Halftime score, Pinnacle Bank scoreboard, Whirling Warriors 26, Thermopolis Bobcats 23, back after this on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. McGarvin Moberly Construction, a Whirlin institution, is celebrating 60 years in business. McGarvin Moberly is a specialized construction company with a focus on highway rehabilitation, maintenance, and reconstruction. For as many years as they've been in business, they've supported Whirlin High School Athletics, and that tradition continues with the support of McKamey Broadcasting. McGarvin Moberly wishes good luck and success to all Whirlin Warrior and Lady Warrior teams this season. McGarvin Moberly, 60 years and counting. Go Warriors! Sally's Classic Pizza in Whirlin, the classiest pizza around. Sally's offers pizza made with fresh dough daily. Go with a classic single topping or load it up with the king. Ten toppings in all. Friday, football and pizza is a winning combination. The Warrior Special is available all school year. Get a large two-topping pizza and a two-liter for just $16.98. Fridays only. Sally's Classic Pizza, 1214 Bighorn Avenue or call 347-2453. I wish I was a little bit smaller, a mini shack baller. I wouldn't have to yell when I talk to a toddler. I wish I had more leg room on a plane or a train. Life is tough when you're taller. Yeah, I shop it big and tall. But when it comes to my Pepsi, I like to keep it nice and small. A soft drink for your pocket. So light and refreshing, one sip, don't knock it. So the next time you have to check out line, grab some Pepsi minis, but get your own. Because these are all mine, mine, mine. We're back here at Hot Springs County High School. 26-23, Warriors lead it at the halftime marker. Head coach Mark Mortimer approaching here at the halftime marker. We're going to let him get his headset on here. As, uh, kind of amazed to try to get up here, Coach. I, I took know, the wrong so, turn. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> I do the same thing. Coach, want to talk about this game. 
I think the scoreboard does not match the effort that the ladies put out tonight. I know the lid has been tight on the hoop all season long for these ladies, despite getting good shots. Tonight was no different. You end up getting back within nine. But what are you most proud of the ladies here uh, tonight against the Cats? You know, honestly, uh, coming out um, after we made some adjustments at halftime and just the, the effort that they played with um, in that second half, uh, I mean, that's a tough conversation talking to a team where it's like, you know, this is a 10-possession game. And that's forever uh, in girls' basketball. So um, just, you know, one step at a time, one stop, one score, and things we do in practice uh, in, in different drills where you have to have three stops, three scores to keep moving on. And um, just I, I can't tell you how proud I am of them. And, you know, we usually don't try to single out kids, but uh, the effort that Katya Navarro had tonight um, was incredible, and it, it's just, uh, it shows, you know, that she's got a lot more confidence, and uh, I can't say, I mean, she's so fun to watch, and the kids around her played off of her effort, and uh, just great plays all around. Uh, just 16 minutes I was really proud of, uh, and we come back to that consistency thing again where we need four quarters of it, and, you know, we'll keep stressing that and uh, get back against Lander tomorrow. Well, Coach, effort is infectious, of course, and, and Kachi really brought that finish with 19 points. I mean, obviously a career night for her. Uh, looking at this team, I mean, now you know it's a 4 c but there's still some basketball left at the back end of this season. What's the, what's the focus for the team moving forward now? I mean, you kind of lose that most important part about the Northwest Conference, but every game for these Lady Wars is going to be important about the confidence heading to regionals. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, things for us to work on and build confidence um, – uh, number one will be, you know, kind of going back to what we game planned for tonight and uh, the follow through on it, uh, especially, you know, we talked about the three kids who could shoot the ball for Thermopolis and, uh, you know, we'll keep working on that with scouting reports. We, we have to take care of things early to stay in games. And I thought we had a great plan. The kids knew what we were doing, but uh, Thermop hit some tough shots in that first half. And I think they made every free throw tonight, so uh, those are tough ones to get back in when the team's matching you bucket for bucket. Uh, another thing, just confidence offensively. Um, we're good shooters. We know we can do it, uh, but, you know, after you have four or five misses in a row and a team scores, uh, you got to go back and have confidence or you're never going to make those buckets. So a couple things that, you know, we will we'll continue stressing to finish things out here. Well, Coach, uh, another quick comment then let you get out of here, but – I think tonight, I, I was saying it on the broadcast, I don't think there was any shot, maybe one or two out there, where maybe you wouldn't have wanted them to take it. I mean, they took on the good shots. They worked into those, you know, some of those easy shots just wasn't going down. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, uh, the way we grade our shots, there was only one shot um, that uh, we gave a bad grade to, and it was, you know, dribbling down on offense and kicking for a three-point no rebounders and other than that I thought the kids did a heck of a job tonight we got the shots we wanted and uh, unfortunately that first half just got away from us. Coach any final thoughts here before we get into the second half of the boys action? Oh no I'm excited I think the kids are ready to go get a you know right back against Lander tomorrow so no time to uh, worry and think about this one. All right coach Mark Borman there Whirling Lady Warriors coach thanks for the time. All right thanks Jordan. As that's Head coach Mark Mortimer there as, uh, as Lady Warriors fall 49 to 40, but as mentioned, a lot of great effort out there uh, for the uh, Warrior or for the Lady Warriors, especially Katya Navarro. We mentioned we're ready for second half action here. Cats already out on the floor. They'll have their starting five. Warriors gonna match up with them as well. Get into the uh, switch of the courts here as the Warriors come out with uh, Teal, Kidgel, Page, Caballero, and Harris, and on the other side, Hasty. Potter, Dukes, Dukes, and Longwell out there. Well, one Dukes, Longwell, and Bomagen open for three to start the half, but didn't take it on. Ball gets in for Potter almost. He's underneath the hoop. Ball stripped away, fouled, and it's going to be two shots on the way. So Warriors can't get a defensive stop to start it. Ball was loose. Harris picks up the foul. So Potter comes to the free throw line again. One point game after one possession. 13 seconds into the quarter, it's 25, 20, 26, 25 Warriors. First possession for Worland. Kidgel, Page, give it up top for Teal. Now Caballero, 
Page has it, top of the key, dribbles left elbow. Kidgel left open for three, left wing, he got it. Tyler Kidgel from downtown. Now the Warriors going a little half court pressure here and now getting it at the top. Hasty out in the right wing. He's looking for an answer in transition. Couldn't get it. Last touch by Dukes and out of bounds. Warriors dodge a bolt there, had great pressure, but what a good find from Bobbingen to Hasty. Bobbingen was stuck in the corner on the mid-court line. Found Hasty, couldn't hit the three, though. Caballero with it now. 29-25. Ball for Page at the right elbow. Teal. Kidgel trying to get it in for Page. Bad pass there, tipped away, taken away by the Cats. Warriors try to create some pressure and chaos in the backcourt. Hasty skip it across now for Potter. Cats settle into the half-court offense now. Del Dukes for Hasty, working around the perimeter, back for Hasty, right wing. Bomingen, Longwell, kick it up top for Dukes. Goes straight downhill to the hoop, up and good. Straight line drive there for Del Dukes. And it's back to a two-point game, 29-27. Caballero has the offense here as Page strides into the front court on his left hip. Caballero for Page, back out for Teal. Splits a couple of defenders, now is it taken away by Hasty? Caballero gonna try to get back in time. Hasty to the hoop, missed the layup, but got his own rebound, he came back from inbound. Should have been a, should have been a turnover back to the Warriors, no. Teal in there the second time, Warriors don't get punished for that. Ball up ahead for Kidgel, taken away by Bomingen in the backcourt. Warriors a little chaotic to start this one as Teal takes this in, he stepped on the sideline though. Good hustle by Brody Teal. A little bit chaotic to start the second half here as Kidgel comes out. Tyshawn Swalstead comes in. Two-point game. War is on top, 29-27. Longwell was open down low. This is a mismatch down low here. War is going to have to try to do something to deal with that. Hasty has it. Thought about the step back three. Now Potter. Offensive foul now going to go on Dell Dukes. And a nice drive inside last time, but... Loader up, no good. Long rebound attempt here for Longwell. He's got it and gets it back for Hasty. So Hasty comes ahead. Caballero will pick him up defensively. 5-17 to go in the third quarter. One possession game. Dukes. Longwell asking for it. He can definitely spot up. Del Dukes gets it up top for Bomingen. Potter wants to drive on Harris. Gets inside. Harris, good defense, but he left his feet. Good move there by Potter. He was patient. And got Harris off his feet. We're tied up for the first time in this game. 29-29, 4.52 left in the third quarter. Page back for Swalstead. Timeout taken here for head coach Aaron Abel. 4.44 to go in the third quarter. 29-29, Pinnacle Bank scoreboard back in a moment on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Stellar Roofing and Construction in Worland offers roofing services, home renovation, and new home construction. Free estimates, plus they handle all insurance claims for a stress-free, streamlined process. Asphalt shingles, rubber roofs, TPO, and metal roofing. Bids for commercial or residential. Housing remodels, new construction, sidings, windows, concrete, and more. Stellar Roofing and Construction has the expertise and experience to get it done right. Stellar Roofing and Construction, 347-3289, or stop in at 1115 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. Ladies and gentlemen, are your diesel engines letting you down? Need a fix that's top-notch, fast, and reliable? DPS is your go-to destination. We are fueled by excellence and driven by expertise. From trucks to trailers, no job's too tough for our skilled crew. We've got the latest technology to get your diesel roaring again. Choose DPS where you decide and we provide. Stop in at 1051 North 10th Street in Worland. Call us 347-4410 or visit us on the web at dps307.com. Warriors have had a specific game plan for tonight. They'll have an inbounds play here. No changes. Haven't seen the likes of Grant Page off the bench. We saw Fisher Martinez a little bit earlier, but it's been mostly six players rotating in for the Warriors. Swalstead, get it for Caballero. Dribbles up the top. Now Swalstead. Little shot fake there. Caballero for Swalstead. Get it down for Harris. Skip it across, Caballero, rises, fires, got it! Brian Caballero from downtown, he got another. 
Got two of them in the game, got six points, both of them from downtown, 32-29 Warriors. All up top for Longwell, Potter wanted it, got the mismatch there, leans in, got the two, they got the mismatch on Swalstead, that's not the way they want the Warriors to go. Head coach Aaron Abel upset about some of the uh, defensive switching going on. Swalstead for Caballero, now for Page, dribbles out of a little trouble. Pass fake for Swalstead. Now he's got it. 3.45 to go. Third quarter. Page for Teal. Back for Page up top. Swing it around for Caballero. Backs it out. Swalstead. Now will start downhill. Swalstead tried to dump it inside, but never saw Longwell. Easy takeaway for the Cats. 32-31 it remains. Andrew Howell into the game for the Cats as well. We get a screen here for... Gerber, Longwell now. Howell, step back three on the way, got it. Howell's been good from the downtown. First lead of the day for the Cats, 34-32. That fast start, nothing but a distant memory for the Warriors as they find themselves down two for the first time tonight. Howell, Caballero going downhill, finds Swalstead. Here's Page in transition for three. That's no good. Fight for it. Harris had Howell all over the top of him. Nothing called, though. And then the other way goes Gerber. Swatted away by Teal, and they're going to call a foul. Two shots coming after Teal picks up the foul. So Canyon Gerber goes to the free throw line now for the Cats. First one up, first one good. Gerber, not enough free throws really to say the percentage. It was only 33% coming into the game, but tough to judge it on less than 10 free throws. Howell and Bominchin out. We see Will Cole into the game for the first time. Looks like uh, Del Dukes pop back into the game as well. Now Teal and Harris out. Grant Page for the first time in there. Mason Decker as well. It's a three-point lead for the Cats. Make it four. 13 to six quarter in favor of the Cats. Ellis Weber into the game as well. It's a two possession game in favor of the Cats. They've outsound their footing since that opening quarter. They got easy buckets. They got them from the outside. They were aggressive since then. They've just settled for things. They've let Thermopolis dictate the game and you cannot let your opponent dictate the game, especially in their own house of Warriors again. Outscored 27 to 12 over the last two quarters. Warriors got to find a way to settle in. There are only two buckets this quarter, both from downtown. Tyler Kidgel and Brian Caballero. Only four field goals over the last two quarters compared to two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten to four field goal advantage. The Cats have made 14 field goals overall. The Warriors, ten. And that's why it's a four-point game. Warriors going to face some pressure again in the backcourt. Swalstead in there along with Page, Page, Decker, and Caballero. Swing it up top now for Mason Decker. Poked away from behind. Potter has it. Warriors turned over immediately. Out of the timeout. Longwell drops it off right for Cole. He stutter stepped there. Traveled with it. Nothing whistled, though. Dukes on the outside. Step back. Three there. Warriors didn't step over the screen. Jet Longwell got the rebound. He airballed the second chance opportunity, though, as Caballero going to have it back here. Get it for Swalstead. Tyshawn's going to dribble here to the right side. Now cross it over at midcourt. Get it for Page. Down low for Grant Page. Back out Tyshawn Swalstead. Sorry about the camera work. Back into the front court we go. Warriors with it. Caballero now working it around. Warriors settle into the offense, trying to get something going. Caballero, Warriors haven't been able to get anywhere near the paint. They've just been working the perimeter. Swalstead backs out. Go for Caballero. Now Decker wants it. Skip it up top for Tyshawn Swalstead, taken away by Ellis Weber. Puts it up out in front, no good. There's Dukes, he missed the shot. Long tip out, Cole Potter open for three straight away. That one's strong, no good. Here's Del Dukes again, spins against one Warrior, now two. Taken away by Owen Page. Good play there finally by the Warriors as Decker has it. Kick it back for Page. Now come across Swalstead for Caballero. Shot fake there, went inside, almost had it taken away. Swalstead, step back, thought about the three. Warriors working now. Caballero has the dribble, but get it for Owen Page. Dump it in for Grant Page. Up and good off glass. Grant Page into the book for the first time. Timeout on the floor, full variety. 36-34, Cats on top by two. Minute three to go in the third quarter. Pinnacle Bank scoreboard on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. In its tw- 
24 years in Worland, King's Carpet One has become a trusted destination for homeowners and a valued member of the community. Discover our exciting new showroom, Room by Room, designed to elevate your shopping experience. A family-owned business that's also a good neighbor, King's Carpet One supports many charities in Worland and throughout the Bighorn Basin. King's Carpet One, giving our best to our customers and our community. The Warriors Supporters Shield. Join the War Party. Thank you to the following War Party members. Jay's Detail, 1626 U.S. Highway 20, 347-2071. Bryant Honey, Pure Wyoming Honey and Pollination Services. Sage Creek Land and Cattle Company. Bighorn Federal Savings Bank, 1006 Bighorn Avenue, 347-6196. Want to join the War Party? Call 307-431-1468 or email mckamiebroadcasting at gmail.com. It's been anything but easy for the Warriors since that opening 20-9 quarter. But they're back within two. Not going to go with any full court pressure. So going to set up in the half court shell here. Shouting out who they have. Potter with it right now. Swalstead defending against Longwell underneath. Longwell trying to get it for Potter. Going to take on Page and out of bounds. Potter had it tip off his leg and out of bounds. Thought maybe hit Page, but the referee said no. Oh. Hot Springs County High School, Corbin Butte to the check-in table, but Page can't hit either. Kitchell tried to help take the uh, take it away here. Howell couldn't bring it under control, though. Potter's got it. Works inside, puts up a floater that's good for Potter. So a transition bucket, so no free throws on one side to the other. Four-point swing there. Swalstead wants to work. Kick it outside, Kitchell. Ten seconds to go now. Look at the clock here by Owen Page. Spin move, puts up a long floating shot, no good. Page over the top, Kidgel, step back, two seconds, one second, Caballero shoots it and buries it. Ice, water, Brian Caballero lives up to the moment, 38-37. It's a one-point game, heading to the fourth quarter on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard here on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Asco Industrial Supply is known for their industrial hoses, steel products, and trailers, but they'll surprise you with products for every customer. Check out Lazy One Clothing, matching pajamas, and more. Kill Tech Jackets for kids and adults, ready to protect you from old man winter. Stay cozy and stylish with Trail Crest Blankets. Stuck? Not a chance with Yankum Kinetic Ropes for every size ride. Give Hasco Industrial Supply a call at 347-6158 or stop in at 415 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. Warrior basketball to start the fourth quarter. It's been an exciting opening 24 minutes. Wouldn't expect anything different this final eight. Brian Caballero at the buzzer of the third quarter brings it back within one. It's a 15-11 quarter in favor of the Cats. Warriors won the first quarter. Now they need to win the fourth quarter. Caballero gets it deep into the backcourt here. He'll stride into your screen from the right. So Caballero... Working with it, has the dribble still. Had to pick up the dribble, goes up, rises, gets it out for Caballero. Trying to dump it inside, it's taken away. The Warriors can't see anything. This defense from the Cats has paid dividends all half long. Warriors haven't had a answer for it. Fortunate there, the Cats carried it off the five there by Bomingen. Tyshawn Swalstead gonna come into the game for Kidgel, Chase Harris going to come in for Grant Page. Warriors got to get aggressive here, get back to their identity. It's a ball and out of bounds. Good job by Page and Swalstead in transition. Warriors got to try to get some stops here. Potter is going to come around. Ball comes in now for Longwell. Turnaround shot plus the foul. Warriors couldn't deny the inbounds, and all of a sudden, Anything that was tipped in the way the Warriors has gone all the way to the Bobcats. It's a five-point deficit chance to make it six for Longwell. 
and the Warriors are searching for answers with 6.41 to go in this fourth quarter. Not sure what the answer is. They got the ball moving good last time down the floor. Couldn't hit the wide open shot as Hasty comes out of the game terribly. Owens had a bit of an off night. He only has five points, all of them coming in the first quarter. Sick and working. Teal for Harris. Harris will back down in. Almost lost it. Foul on the floor. Back to a two-point game, 42-40. to 40. So Warriors going to try to deny the inbounds. Ball tipped away. Last touch by Potter. Oh, no. It was tipped by Harris. Thought maybe it just came off the fingertips of Potter. Not sure, but... Good defense that time by Harris. Now an awkward corner inbounds here for the Cats. Ball comes up top, though, easily for Bominger. Off to his right side. A dribble down to the paint. Try to go all the way down underneath. Has to kick it out. Swalstead. Shot fake there. Try to go behind the back for Page. Did. Got it up off glass. What a fancy pass there from Tyshawn Swalstead. Then Longwell runs the floor, and he's fouled by Harris. He's got to be aggressive here on the defensive rebounds on any kind of miss. This one's up and good. Two a two trip. Cats are seven to twelve from the line. Warriors eight of twelve. Now some full court pressure. Caballero skip it across now for Tyshawn Swalstead. Get it for Grant Page. Owen Page. Now a three for Teal. That one missed. Not sure that's the shot that they want. As the Cats try to run the floor, but the Warriors did a job good getting back defensively. Dell Dukes timeout. 30-second variety taken by head coach Shane Corpening. We step away with them as well. 44-42. Warriors trail it by two. 4.22 to go in the fourth quarter. Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. Trucking is a family-owned and operated company in Worland, Wyoming, offering trucking services for a host of industries. They have done extensive work in Wyoming, Montana, North Dakota, and Colorado, as well as surrounding Rocky Mountain states for the past 70 years. Their modern and up-to-date equipment allows them to provide full-service solutions for their customers' needs, from start to completion. Swing Trucking, 347-4161. Swing Trucking is a proud supporter of McKamey Broadcasting and Worland High School Athletics. Back here at Hot Springs County High School, Cat basketball out of the timeout. 4.22 to go in the fourth. Ton of basketball left here between these two squads. They've been fighting back and forth. Warriors led by as many as 11. The Cats' biggest lead has been four. Duke's going to inbounds here for Cole. Now up top for Weber. Dukes has it outside left. Now Cole wants to drive, gets inside the paint, now ran out of room, give it back for Weber, pull up from 15, that one's no good, as Teal has the rebound, and that's a foul. Gonna be a reach in on Dell Dukes. That's his third, and that's critically number four of the quarter, I believe, on the Cats. Next one puts the Warriors at the line. Ball in for Swalstead. He'll dribble, move some players around. Now he's going to throw it into the middle for Teal. Throw it over the top for Caballero. Going to wait for the offense to get back going. That one's over the top of Page. Saved it in for Teal. Teal cross court it for Caballero. Warriors got to settle it down. Sorry, had the camera away. <laughs> My bad. Warriors now settle into it with Swalstead. Page. Teal going downhill. Inside out for Caballero. Now Page. Starts, stops. There goes Swalstead down the lane. Past his man, and that's going to be a blocking foul there. And that's going to send Tyshawn Swalstead to the free throw line. No changes for the Warriors. See when we see Harris come back into the game. And right now on a make, if Tyshawn can put it in, and he does. So player coming in, matches me for Grant Page. Now a little full court pressure. Warriors got to be just aware of that little back run situation. Ball thrown in and out of bounds by Bomingen and Hasey. They just had a little miscommunication there. Chance for the Warriors to take the lead here. Swalstead to do the inbounding. Ball comes way up top for Owen Page. 3.25 to go here. Caballero now has it. Swalstead. Warriors trail it by one. Get it for Owen Page. He'll drive. Gets past one. Stripped away there. And now Potter the other way. Swalstead going to go past him. Potter missed the bunny. He missed the bunny. Warriors back up the floor with Caballero. 
Crosses past one, got a man to leave his feet. Hook shot up, no good. Harris saved it into the corner for Tyshawn Swalstead. Still has the dribble, now needs some help. Owen Page rises for three, he got it! Owen Page rips the cords from the left wing. 46-44, Warriors on top, 2.50 to go. We got a ball game. Cats into the front court with Potter. Thermopolis and Worland faithful on their feet here as we're set for an exciting finish. Hasty for an answer, got it. Warriors didn't close out on Zach Hasty and he buried the triple. 47-46, Cats. Teams trade deep balls. Page going to wait for some movement here as Caballero comes across. Page picked up the dribble, now gets it for Caballero. Now he'll dribble towards the top of the key. Find it for Swalstead. Trying to get it inside, haven't been able to get it there yet. Ball in for Harris, he'll go to work on Potter. Puts up a little hook shot on the inside, can't hit it the first time. Has it ripped away and it's tied up there as Bomingen and Harris end up on the deck. It's gonna be Cat basketball on the tie up. Jet Longwell gonna come back into the game. Warriors gonna go for a little full court pressure look again. Hasty going to do the inbounding. Ball comes in now for Gerber. Picked up the dribble, goes across for Hasty. Now Longwell at midcourt, throws it across for Gerber. Minute 48 to go here. Cats with it. Hasty looking to go up top for Longwell. Up here, Swalstead nearly took it away there from Canyon Gerber. Minute 30 to go here. 90 seconds going to decide this one. Gerber up top. Hassled by Swalstead. Trying to get rid of it. Finally did for Howell. Howell around. Get it for Hasty outside. Trying to jump it there was Page. Stepping inside. That's going to be a... That should have been a walk there. Looked like a walk, but they're going to call a blocking foul. A little bailout there. Going to go against Brody Teal. That's his fourth. So that's going to send Zach Hasty to the free throw line. Hit the big triple. Now a chance to put his team... Up by three. Timeout on the floor taken by head coach Aaron Aiden going in. Cats have been right around that number, right around 60% tonight, 7 of 12. Minute 16 to go. Chance for Hastings to make it a full one-possession game at three-point lead. Warriors have to be ready for the defensive rebound. They've gotten worked out, outworked a little bit on the uh, glass a little bit. Warriors going to break the huddle here. Finally do onto the floor, and the Warriors will stack up in the paint here to try and get a rebound as Caballero comes forward. So hasty at the line. Everybody rest on the first. Two shots coming. So the first one for Hasty is on the way. A little bit for Teal. Back for Caballero. Thought about the three. Now starts downhill. Takes on his man. Foul from behind on Del Dukes. That in mind. Second one, rattles in and out, no, fight for it, Harris, plus the foul, let's go! Chase Harris! Got inside of Potter, put it up off the glass and good. Potter picks up number four and Harris a chance to give the Warriors a lead late. Hadn't scored since the second quarter. Now we're knotted up at 48. Tyler Kidgel back into the game. Harris chance to give the Warriors a lead of the 57.6 mark here inside the final minute. Harris eyes the target. That one's no good. Potter better position that time. Ball's thrown up now for Longwell. Gerber with it, and now will slow things down. Give it for Hasty. Potter wants it. Hasty going to go downhill, trying to get to the line. They're going to call a foul. 6.8 seconds left here. 49-48. Kidgel out. Swalstead back in. Brought Kidgel in for his defense including seven of them here in the quarter. Timeout taken here. Shane Corpening, 50-50. to 50. What a game we got. 29.1 seconds left here in this one. Full time on the floor, back in 30 seconds at Hot Springs County High School on the McKamey Broadcasting Network.
McGarvin Moberly Construction, a Worland institution, is celebrating 60 years in business. McGarvin Moberly is a specialized construction company with a focus on highway rehabilitation, maintenance, and reconstruction. For as many years as they've been in business, they've supported Worland High School Athletics, and that tradition continues with the support of McKamey Broadcasting. McGarvin Moberly wishes good luck and success to all Worland Warrior and Lady Warrior teams this season. McGarvin Moberly, 60 years and counting. Go Warriors! And we're back here at Hot Springs County High School. 29.1 seconds going to be the difference in this one in regulation between the Warriors and the Bobcats. Bobcat basketball, each foul, aside from an offensive foul, will put the other team at the free throw line. So Cat basketball down on the low baseline. Warriors going to come out of the huddle here quickly. Got to come out quickly. So Warriors got to go pick up their man here as they come onto the floor. Page will defend the inbound. Ball's going to come in now for Hasty. Longwell has it. Back now for Gerber. Hasty. Longwell. Ball tipped around here for Bomingen. Kick it back up top for Gerber. Warriors got to defend. Might be a last chance opportunity here for the Cats. Potter with it, trying to go back door for Bomingen. Put the shot up and good. 10 seconds to go here. Timeout for the war or for the Cats here. 8.1 seconds left and it's at this point again. The Warriors let in a bucket late. This one from Cody Bomingen. He had only had two points in the game. Now has four and the all important two point lead for the Cats. Timeout taken on the floor back in 30 on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. Sally's Classic Pizza in Worland, the classiest pizza around. Sally's offers pizza made with fresh dough daily. Go with a classic single topping or load it up with the king. Ten toppings in all. Friday, football and pizza is a winning combination. The Warrior Special is available all school year. Get a large two-topping pizza and a two-liter for just six Warriors. Don't know if the Cats are going to bring any pressure, if they're just going to try to defend in the front court. We will see. It looks like they're going to defend in the front court here. Warriors going to have to break out of the timeout huddle here quickly. Don't want to see the ball hit the deck. And the Warriors go and break the huddle. So the Warriors have it drawn up. Owen Page going to come down the length of the court. Owen Page going to inbound this one. Ball's going to come in here for Chase Harris. This one back for Tyshawn Swalstead. They tried to ex execute the Valpo play, and Harris left it short of Swalstead. Foul Hasty. Chance for Zach Hasty to seal this game pretty much with two free throws. Owen Page going to come back in after the first free throw. Head coach Aaron Abel said it on our at our halftime show of the girls game. Nothing is given, everything is earned as Hasty goes to the free throw line, no good. Warriors will have a chance to tie no matter what. Warriors, I don't know if they have any timeouts or not. Warriors will go inside the uh, paint here. So Hasty, chance to make it a full three point game here for the 43 to 30. Outscored 43 to 30 over the final three quarters as the Cats are going to get the victory. Warriors fall to two and four in the 3A Northwest, still in good position to get that three seed. But again, a tough loss here again, as head coach Aaron Abel said, a victory against Lovell and a great performance against Powell does not earn you a victory at Hot Springs County High School. They got a good look off at the buzzer, just a little bit short this time for Caballero. And at the end of the day, it's a 52-50 to 50 loss for the Warriors postgame show. Comes your way next on the McKamey Broadcasting Network. I was a little bit smaller, a mini shack baller. I wouldn't have to yell when I talk to a toddler. I wish I had more leg room on a plane or a train. Life is tough when you're taller. Yeah, I shop it big and tall. But when it comes to my Pepsi, I like to keep it nice and small. A soft drink for your pocket. 
so light and refreshing. One sip, don't knock it. So the next time you have to check out line, grab some Pepsi minis, but get your own. Because these are all mine, mine, mine. Stellar Roofing and Construction in Worland offers roofing services, home renovation, and new home construction. Free estimates, plus they handle all insurance claims for a stress-free, streamlined process. Asphalt shingles, rubber roofs, TPO, and metal roofing. Bids for commercial or residential. Housing remodels, new construction, sidings, windows, concrete, and more. Stellar Roofing and Construction has the expertise and experience to get it done right. Stellar Roofing and Construction, 347-3289, or stop in at 1115 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. Ladies and gentlemen, are your diesel engines letting you down? Need a fix that's top-notch, fast, and reliable? DPS is your go-to destination. We are fueled by excellence and driven by expertise. From trucks to trailers, no job's too tough for our skilled crew. We've got the latest technology to get your diesel roaring again. Choose DPS where you decide and we provide. Stop in at 1051 North 10th Street in Worland. Call us 347-4410 or visit us on the web at dps307.com. In its 24 years in Worland, King's Carpet One has become a trusted destination for homeowners and a valued member of the community. Discover our exciting new showroom, Room by Room, designed to elevate your shopping experience. A family-owned business that's also a good neighbor, King's Carpet One supports many charities in Worland and throughout the Bighorn Basin. King's Carpet One, giving our best to our customers and our community. And welcome inside the post-game show. Jordan McKamey with you. If you're just joining us, missed a great game. Warriors fall 52-50. The Brian Caballero buzzer beater couldn't strike midnight twice. Got a great look off. Just missed on the front of the rim. Warriors hit a layup uh, late on. In the uh, late on in the contest, with uh, about nine seconds left, Warriors turned it over, trying to play the complete the Valpo play, the same one they did last week, but then turned it over. Harris couldn't hit Swalstead. We're able to get bailed out. Got a foul with five seconds to go. Got the ball up the floor to the right wing. Caballero Rose fired. It was on line, but just needed a little more air underneath it and could have been celebrating in back-to-back -back buzzer beaters. But at the end of the day, this is just a reminder that nothing is given, everything is earned. Into a post-game scoring summary here for the Thermopolis Bobcats. Jet Longwealth, eight, seven for Canyon Gerver, four for Cody Bomingen, four for Del Dukes, two for Armani Dukes, eight for Zach Hasey, 10 for Brody Potter, and nine for Andrew Howell. For the Warriors, 12 for Brody Teal, one apiece for Mason Decker and Tyshawn Swalstead, three for Tyler Kidgel, 12 for Owen Page, nine for Brian Caballero, 10 for Chase Harrison, two for Grant Page in what was a 50 to 50 to a 52 to 50 loss, a nail biter throughout. Warriors got out in this game looking at the uh, quarter by quarter, got up to a 20 to nine lead in the first quarter, scored the first 11 points of the game, felt like they had all the momentum. Cats come back with a 14 to six second quarter to cut the lead to three. Then a 15-11 third quarter gave them a 38-37 lead, and in the end, a 14-13 fourth quarter was enough to give them the victory for the Thermopolis Bobcats. It was tight all the way throughout. Warriors showed a lot of good fight, a lot of heart out there, and again, tip of the cap to head coach Shane Corping and the Hot Springs County High School Bobcats for a game well played. Uh, they pick up their first 3A Northwest Conference victory, uh, Warriors would need some bad math to go against them. I think they're pretty much in that three seed. Head coach Aaron Abel's talking about, I don't think there's any way that they can uh, move out of that three seed spot. But uh, again, tonight, you know, it's just a team. You know, I have to play the Bobcats in the, you know, West semis or anything else like that. Like, you just don't know who's going to come out of this. And imagine at the regional at Hot Springs County High School, imagine the place was rocking tonight. It's really going to be rocking uh, then if that game does happen. But, of course, it would be great to have the call of that one. 52-50 to 50 the final. Uh, we're still waiting for head coach Aaron Abel to come out of the locker room, see if we can get a post-game chat with him. Again, a lot of motions here on the road. Uh, a lot of intensity for the coach at the end of this one. We'll see if we can get a post-game. 071. Bryant Honey, Pure Wyoming Honey and Pollination Services. 
Sage Creek Land and Cattle Company, Bighorn Federal Savings Bank, 1006 Bighorn Avenue, 347-6196. Want to join the war party? Call 307-431-1468 or email mckamiebroadcasting at gmail.com. Hasco Industrial Supply is known for their industrial hoses, steel products, and trailers, but they'll surprise you with products for every customer. Check out Lazy One Clothing, matching pajamas, and more. Kill Tech Jackets for kids and adults, ready to protect you from old man winter. Stay cozy and stylish with Trail Crest Blankets. Stuck? Not a chance with Yankum Kinetic Ropes for every size ride. Give Hasco Industrial Supply a call at 347-6158 or stop in at 415 Bighorn Avenue in Worland. And welcome back inside of Hot Springs County High School. Jordan McKamey with you. I think we're going to try to have a quick talk with head coach Aaron Abel. I know with the roads and everything, everybody wants to get home. Safe travels for anybody listening uh, here in Thermopolis in the crowd or anything like that. Safe travels home. Take your time. Make sure you get back to your uh, loved ones safe and sound. Uh, we'll wait. Head coach Aaron Abel, as uh, he walks on over towards us, we'll have a quick conversation with the coaches. I know they got a Quick turnaround as Lander comes to town tomorrow night. So we'll have the coach put on the uh, headset here and have a quick conversation. Head coach Aaron Abel with us now. Coach, you talked about it. Yeah. Nothing is given. Everything is earned. You almost earned it late. But talk to me about the momentum shifts in this game where you came out yeah. absolutely like you wanted to, but couldn't sustain that in the long run. No, our guys thought a fast four minutes would be enough, and uh, we just weren't here tonight mentally. That's the hardest part. Um, you know, we were we, – we played a great great start of the game, and then nothing nothing we did would uh, would resonate with our guys. You know, we, it, was, it was frustrating. Um, definitely one of the more frustrating losses I've had because that – Shouldn't have gone that way, but defensively, we will guard ball screens every practice until the end of the season. That's really where the momentum shift started to happen. Um, they started to, to handle our pressure in our zone, so we jumped into man, and then we couldn't guard ball screens all night. That was a huge struggle for us, and we made the adjustment at halftime to switch, and half our guys would switch, half our guys didn't. We'd sometimes switch. We didn't talk. I'm not sure why that happened. But we just weren't in the gym mentally, and that's the most most frustrating part. You know, in that last time out, tied 50-50, we said, no more my bad. Um, and then we went out there and got backdoored for a layup, so it was one more my bad. So it was a fitting end to a frustrating night, unfortunately. And, Coach, I know definitely a, a frustrating finish when you, I mean, of course, always got to look at least some of the, uh, sh maybe some of the shiny parts left over. I mean, what did you what did you like from your team? Maybe if we just go back to those opening moments of the game. Yeah, I mean, you know, they, they all were playing with confidence, and that's the thing, you know, when they, they just kind of let that leave them at, at some point. But, you know, when, when we were playing with confidence and just playing aggressive and attacking, things were going well. And then they switched to a zone on us, and we just really struggle. And Lander is going to do nothing but 2-3 zone us tomorrow. And if we don't come better than what we were tonight, it'll be more of the same struggles, and, and we'll, we'll be frustrated again. So need a better attack against the 2-3 the zone for sure. Coach, is the, uh, maybe the, down the back stretch of the season as the Northwest Conference season over, is it maybe execution and follow through maybe the two, two main efforts for this team to get to where they need to be? Yeah, I think our guys were just worried about a lot of, we talked in the pregame, you know, what's in your control right now, okay? Things that are going on outside the gym, not in our control. How the JV played, not in our control anymore. Senior night tomorrow, not in our control. What can we control is our execution effort, um, you know, and energy. 
And unfortunately, uh, we weren't worried about the things we could control. We were just worried about too many external factors tonight, I think. All right, so the focus needs to tighten up into a smaller circle. Coach, any final thoughts here before we let you get on the road and obviously tra travel safe home? Thank you. No, uh, appreciate it. And uh, with, with all of my, you know, kind of negativity right now, I wouldn't <laughs> trade these guys for anybody. They still fight hard every time, and that's – uh, that's all I can ask. So I, I appreciate their fight. Every every night they bring that, and, and that's what I love about them. And, Coach, I would say I think anybody that knows you and anybody that's seen this program would never never doubt your care and your love for your players. So we appreciate the passion and the time. Thanks. Thanks. Head Coach Aaron Abel there for the Whirling Warriors as they – Head out of Thermopolis with what was a disappointing 52-50 to 50 loss. Almost got the buzzer beater at the end, but as head coach Aaron Abel said, maybe should have never been in that position to need that late three from Brian Caballero. We sign off here from Thermopolis High School, Hot Springs County High School, 52-50 to 50 the final. Warriors welcome in the Lander Valley High School Tigers tomorrow to Warrior Gymnasium at Worland High School. It is senior night. Let us pack the gym. I love to have my viewers here on McCain broadcasting if you have to watch here absolutely do it but man if you can get out there support these kids make that gym loud uh, send them off with a home victory uh, on a Friday night senior night for the Warriors 530 scheduled tip off for the girls 7 o'clock for the boys 230 fresh and 4 o'clock for JV get out there and support them as the Warriors have their final home game then one more at Buffalo next week before they wrap up the season and get ready for the 3A West Regional Tournament. Finals here from Hot Springs County High School. Lady Warriors fall 49-40. to Warriors also fall 52-50. to The finals on the Pinnacle Bank scoreboard. And until next time, and there will be a next time, go Whirland Warriors.